Yes, it says we're live. Yeah. All right, we're live. Welcome. Today is November 2nd, 2018, which is known as Fountain Pen Day worldwide. Since 2012 has been a regular staple in people's everyday just love of fountain pens. And, uh, you know, I'm joined here by, and I've got a lot of epithets for you. So I have the capless kid. We can't, we can't say epithets because I don't know what it means. <laughs> Nicknames. 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 Nickname. So, so this, if you were a martial artist fighter, uh, or a big time boxer, these would be your nicknames. I will okay. call you. If, and, and, and you had to deal with fountain pens. So you are the capless kid, the inky entertainer, the prince of pelican. He puts the verde in Monteverde. He is the nib beast from the far east. <laughs> the Franklin to my Kristoff, Mr. <laughs> Penboy Roy. What's up? <laughs> the far yeah. east one, I like that Yeah, one. The, 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 be the nib beast from the far east. Uh, so, also we have uh, Chris here. He's, uh, he's our cameraman today. Hello, everyone. So, he is, uh, he is on point with all things uh, videography related, and he edits all those awesome nice uh un non-live videos that you guys see that are fully produced at gold's flat pen so when people ask us questions he's gonna see them before yes we do. so he is the he's kind of like the the moderator of uh so he filters out like the the negative hate that you would typically see like on youtube comments so Really? Yeah. And there's a lot of it out there. Hmm. Trust me. He's like going to be looking at He's going to be horrified by the time he's <laughs> like, going to be like, oh my God, I didn't know that people could be like so savage. It's unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, but typically we would also have Josh here, but he is not, uh, he's here in spirit because if this were an actual live video and Josh was here, um, it would be as quiet. So, because uh, <laughs> he doesn't talk much, but we love Josh. Uh, so thank you all for tuning in. Uh, like I said earlier, we have Penboy Roy here. And we, it is Fountain Pen Day, and we are hanging out, and we are talking all things uh, fountain pen related. And uh, it isn't just about having an excuse to buy pens. Um, I mean, of course, we're a pen retailer, and that's what we could go into. We could do like a whole HSN or QVC sort of thing and be like, oh, look, oh my God, isn't this like the most like beautiful like pen that you've ever seen and like oh it's like you know 169 dollars at gold spot pens you know like it's not going to be about that we're going to be hanging out we're going to be talking about fountain pen day about how to infect others with the fountain pen virus uh and to get people writing with fountain pens enjoy them and and whatnot so um you know but we'll get to the whole you know we'll show off pens and we'll get to the whole you know uh you know discussing about like the different models and things like that later but um, one of the best things about Fountain Pen Day is spending it with other pen addicts and nerding out bad pens, which is why we're having this live hangout. So please feel free to comment, uh, you know, chat with Chris, because Chris will, you know, relay us any sort of questions or any comments that we could uh, then talk about here and uh, talk to amongst each other, like just, you know, chat, you know, use the live stuff to chat with. So um, first topic of discussion. So what do you do on Fountain Pen Day? Besides coming to visit Goldsmith. Right. Well, what I, I'll tell you what I don't do. I don't come prepared. You got note cards. You got pens. I brought water. I didn't even bring snacks. I, I stole your candy up front. Yes. I was eating your candy. The Halloween candy. Yeah. And then you provided me with my drink. I'll serve you drink. Well, wow. Yeah. I'm we, impressed. We like, cheers. Cheers. Yes. That's my water, so I just do water. I gotta use I'm water boring. too, then. What is this? I got uh, Kiehl's. Kiehl's. I think it's like a makeup company that my my wife goes to and it's it was free. But is it is is the water keels too? What's that? Is the water? No, it's water is uh, faucet water. Oh, okay. I, I ran it through a brita, so it's definitely not toxic. But uh, oh, what do I do on Fountain Pen Day? So um, what do I do on Fountain Pen Day? Hmm. I released a song that is a tribute to Fountain Pen Day. I love that song, by the way. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I it's, it's actually songs. better than the original, <laughs> because I always thought the original, the original's always tied to, like, Donnie Darko for me, and uh, it's, we're talking about uh, uh, Mad World, Yeah, and uh, we're, like, <coughs> listening to your sad word, you know, brings it all sorts of different contexts. I think that people can relate to it just a little bit more. For me, the, the first time I heard that song, it was on The Crazies. Okay. With, what was it, Timothy, Tiff, Timothy Alfont? And I always liked the way that song sounded, um, so I just I just went and repurposed the whole song 
in tribute to Fountain Pen Day and my boy Carrie Yeager. Yeah. Who's a solid dude. He he's, works at Kenro. Yeah, he's the torchbearer of the uh, Fountain Pen Day movement. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's at he's in currently in Ohio right now. He's in Ohio. Yeah, he's in he's at the Ohio Pen Show, which is something that uh, I was gonna touch on a little bit. Oh, pen show. Uh, I've only been to one pen show. I've been to the Long Island Pen Show, and that was it. Mm hmm. But that's 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 definitely a a, a, a must go to if you're anywhere around that vicinity. Yeah. Uh, to to go to that during the weekend. So that was it's funny that they don't do like. A fountain pen show on fountain pen day well actually i think ohio used to be around the state but now they make it every uh, they now they make it when fountain pen day comes they out well they, now they specifically moved it well they're like, smart. It's been do, they've been doing it for i think 25 years so i think but like since fountain pen day has been a thing they've mm -hmm. been doing it on fountain pen day weekend which is i mean that's the greatest you know thing to do but that's what they did so. hey chris are they having trouble hearing us because i feel like the camera's pretty far Let's get some feedback. Hey, Chris, are they having trouble hearing us? Because like, <laughs> They're not having trouble hearing us. iPhone 10 they, people. Yes. Oh, man. No, it's because that's pretty smart. How, how is it that Ohio got to have the Fountain Pen Day? Well, I think just naturally show? it was around that date, but then they moved it. Mm. So I think that uh, they make it now consistently that week. Because if, if I was any other Fountain Pen Show arranger guy, I would jump for Fountain Pen Day myself. I, I think there actually should be more. Like, I feel like that... You know, people in, in different areas of the country could do, like, pen meets, but, like, I feel like maybe there should be s actual other shows that happen coincidingly, like, in different areas of the country. Um, because I think there would be enough vendors, I think, locally to, like, let's say, sustain a Fountain Pen Day, mm -hmm. like, a mini show. Even if it was, like, a one-day show, maybe they have, like, one in, like, the, the metro area here. And then they have one in like the uh, in California somewhere, Los Angeles or San Diego or you know somewhere as a metro area like San Francisco. I wish know? like we had like 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 biannual like fountain pen days. Like I don't know, November would be like Nib Day November, and, and you know Fountain Pen Day would be. Like, <laughs> and it would like, be like February or something. Flexible you know? February or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flexible flexi February. Stub Stub Nibs uh, September. September. <laughs> um, you know, and then there's a celebration because you know I was thinking about it. Fountain Pen Day is like a really cool concept. You know, I, I give credit to Carrie Yeager because, like, he just liked fountain pens so much. Dude used to work at AMP. Yeah. Right? And he quit that, and then he decided that he's going to just focus on enjoying the rest of his life. And he liked fountain pens, and he just came up with an idea. He made up a holiday, and he's just like, hey, let's do this. And then he spread it out. That guy should have been president. <laughs> Seriously. Like, he made a holiday. You have to be dead to have a holiday. I've right? been trying to make Halloween a like a, a, a day-specific holiday for years now, and I have not been successful at it. What do you mean? Like, instead of ha being Halloween being, like, the 31st of October, make it like how Fountain Pen Day is. It's, it's always going to be a fixed day of the week. Like, it's the first Friday in November. So like, so, like, Halloween would be, let's say, like, the last Saturday in October. Because, like, because then you would have the ability for the kids to go, they could go trick-or-treating out all day. You could plan all the parties that day. You could, you, everybody could be either at home or, like, they you could all, it's a co coordinated effort. Let me tell you something. I don't have kids, but right now you have probably, like, 15 million, like, however pet people are many watching. How, how, how often am I by 15 million? How many do we have logged in watching us, Chris? Uh, about... 14,999,990. So you got that many people with kids saying, dude, what are you talking about? If they did that, that means their kids are going to be home every Halloween. They're going to be eating sugar. Then the next day they're going to be home and they have to deal with the consequences of kids bouncing around the house with sugar. The reason why they didn't do that is they're hoping for those days where they can't go trick-or-treating because it's a Wednesday and the next day they have school. Right. Right. <clears throat> I see that. You know, Fountain Pen Day being... The first Friday of every November, I think, is a is a great thing because there's no real backlash. Like you don't have anybody going into diabetic strokes because of Fountain Pen Day. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you can, I mean, it's it's a sugar free, free maybe. it's a sugar free, guilt free indulgence. That's why I would think it, of it as. I agree, yeah. but it's probably not good for the wallets because all these retailers are having sales and whatnot. Yeah. Right? Are you guys having sales? We are, but we'll 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 talk about that later. Hmm. I don't want to hit people over the head again with the QVC, HSN sort of stuff. But uh, um, but one of the things we were talking about is like how, you know, what do we do to celebrate it? One thing is the uh, pen show, uh, pen meetup. 
uh, bring your fountain pens to work. You bring your fountain pens to work, right? Sorry, one second, Chris. Yes. Uh, find out what QPC HSN stands for. I just want to make sure he's not calling me a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you were saying. So, you bring your your pens to work, right? I do. So, what, like, but you do it on a daily basis. 100%. Some and sometimes people I bring don't. 100. Some people don't want to wave their freak flag about fountain pens. Why like, not? they, they want to just, because they want to keep it conservative. They don't want to, let's say, bring, let's say, a unicorn Edison pen loaded with, pen, with pink ink uh, you know, to, to work because like, you know, maybe they, they might feel a little uncomfortable kind of like showing that off and, and writing notes that are in pink, but Fountain Pen Day gives you that license to say, let's go ahead and just, you know, it, the excuse is if somebody gets something and they say, oh, well, what is this? Like, you just wrote this in like calligraphy or something. It's like, well, it's Fountain Pen Day. Oh, that's my favorite. When I just write something, first of all, I think there's a flaw with what you just said, <clears throat> and I don't want to correct you in front of people, but... <laughs> You're telling me that people don't want to go to work with their fountain pens because they don't want to wave their freak flag. I don't think Fountain Pen Day changes that because if they don't want to wave their freak flag, going to work and explaining that today is Fountain Pen Day is probably worse than just showing up with a pen. Wouldn't you say? But what I do when I'm at work is I prepare everybody. How do you prepare everybody? I bring about 115 pens to work every single day. <laughs> and every time I have to write, I take out my binder and I select one. And then if I'm trying to select one and somebody talks to me, I'll literally be like, dip, 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 dip. I'm choosing pens and I'll take a pen. No one even bothers asking me to borrow a pen anymore. Mm -hmm. Because what I do is when they say, hey, can I borrow your pen? I tell them very kindly, drop dead. <laughs> drop dead. This pen is worth more to me than your life. So if I let you borrow it and you screw it up, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to kill you. <laughs> well, let me there. There, there's where I would suggest something else is for Fountain Pen Day because we are all about spreading the fountain pen enthusiasm, the mm -hmm. fountain pen <coughs> nerdiness. Is is like let's say let's say you do bring your A game as far as your pens, mm -hmm. which I always do. But you don't want to lend your pens out to people because like you know of course obvious reasons. But Let's say you have like a, a couple of starter pens at home. You don't use them so much because you like your, your higher end models. Right. You, you bring specifically on Fountain Pen Day, like one that's inked, ready to go. And if somebody's interested, say, oh, you know, it's Fountain Pen Day, by the way. It's like, then you just lend it to it. And you wouldn't really have the consequence of saying like, okay, well, if they break it, then so what, you know? Well, there's also another caveat with that. Like, so I do have cheap pens and, and I like that idea. Mm -hmm. It works. So I have a couple of uh, Jinhao 992s. You can buy them real cheap. You right. Know? And I ink them up and I bring them to work and then if somebody is like, oh, wow, look at that, I give it to them. Mm -hmm. But the contract doesn't end there, Tom. If I don't see them with that pen the very next day, two days later, a week later, a year mm -hmm. later, you better believe I'm going to grill them to the ends of the earth. Hey, dude, um, I, lent you, I gave you that pen, right? It was, it was a nice pen, right? It's better than any pen that you've ever had in your life. Why don't you have it? Why do I see that big crystal yeah, what is that, sticking what is out that of that your pocket right now? Sometimes I'll just take their big crystal and be like, see this pen? Yeah. <laughs> Go get the pen that I gave you, and you use that from now on. It works. It's persuasive. Yeah, here's another thing that happened to me. One of, one of my guys at work comes up to me, and he's like, hey, that's, that, that's a nice pen I'm using. What was I using? I was using a Twisby Echo. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was like, oh, that's a nice pen. And it is one of these guys, I love the guy, but he, he just never stops talking to me. So I made him eat his words. I'm like, oh, you like it? He's like, yeah, yeah, man, I think I'm going to get one. I'm like, guess what? I'll get it for you, and then you'll pay me for it. So I got one, and I gave it to him, and I made him pay me for it. But guess what? What? Infected. Infected. He loves that pen. Nice. He loves that pen. Doesn't really like open <coughs> hands until that day. So the cost of him opening his mouth was 30 bucks, but he gained a fountain pen that he now loves and uses every day to this and day. That, and that pen, that 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 seed of that enthusiasm, priceless. Absolutely. When he got when he got um, when he got engaged, I even got his his uh, fiance a fountain pen. Nice. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a nice purple one. It was one of the Conklin Knights. Okay. I got it, uh, I got it for her, and I wrote a nice letter. I said this is like for her, you know, thanking her for taking care and and making one of my guys happy. I appreciate it. Somehow he ended up with it. 
<laughs> it's in his <laughs> possession at all times. So I'm like, you know what, that's cool. It's up to hey, him. Hey, as know? long as it's being used. Yeah, you know, but he, he really likes it. So that's one infected. I, I've infected several people with the fountain pen virus. I'm, I'm proud to say. That is, that is an achievement. And yeah. I mean, that's what fountain, that's a part of what fountain pen day is all about. 100%. So. Um, what else you got in those note cards? Yeah, also another thing too is I, I would suggest, uh, you know, writing more than usual. And then also too is if you're writing and you post a lot on social media, like posting, you know, selfies or whatever, post a handwritten one. I love that. Yeah, I love with the that. pen, you know, share, share it like on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever, or Snapchat, wherever that you <coughs> hang out online and talk to people. Post, you know, let's say take, you can look on our feed or, or on Roy's feed. And, like there's tons of pictures of just showing a piece of paper, something handwritten on it, and then you know, like what the pen and ink is on there. It's like I a, love that. My yeah. thing is this, if you're gonna like, I see it all the time, like on Facebook, people like post their stupid thought or their intelligent thought or a thought that probably them and they only care about. Right. And I'll look past words and I scroll past it. I'm like, I don't want to read and I'll just scroll past it. Yeah. But if I see the same statement, it could be the dumbest thing in the world. It, it, it doesn't matter, but it's handwritten. I, it'll just, I stop it's and like, I look a at second. it. Right. Especially, especially too, as you you see a pen that you like on there. Oh yeah, like, oh yeah. that's a gorgeous pen. It just leads you in. You know, I have like on face on not Facebook, Instagram. I, before I didn't understand the concept of Instagram. I see you raising your hand. Oh uh, yeah, uh, so, just I didn't want to interrupt your current thread, but there's a, a we have a question. Okay, yeah, all right, because right. right. that so, didn't interrupt me. Totally <laughs> might as well just be like, yo. Okay, so uh, Carter Giacobini says, Carter Hey guys, uh, I'm just getting into fountain pens and getting more expensive ones. I just got the Esterbrook Esty. What oh, would you suggest nice. for my, my third face. pen? Hold on a second. What was the first one? Did it say uh, the first he, one? He only mentions the Esterbrook Esty. The Esterbrook Esty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what is the first one though? And what's, what's be curious when you say that. more expensive, what more is more expensive, expensive? More expensive than the Esterbrook Esty? Right. Or in that same range or lower or? Because if from there, there's a lot of different options. Or did you, like, uh, bounce out? Because not yet. <laughs> yeah. But no like, response yet. I, I kind of riff off on that a little bit and just kind of, like, explore different ideas, like, within that, which I happen to have. Is the yes so do I. I. I came prepared, actually. I brought yeah. pens, but that's just a normal effect of what I do. Like, yeah. when I go out to the gym, I bring a pen with me. You have to bring out your pens, especially to fountain pen day. You never know who you're going to run into and who you're going to have to be more snobby than. Yeah. Oh, uh, first pen is the Metropolitan, uh, okay. and he's thinking same range-ish, maybe a bit more expensive, but not too crazy. Than the, than the SD, then. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I would uh, automatically think of, because it just happens to be sitting right in front of me, or looking at, like, the Edison pen, uh, like the Beaumont's, um, but, like, you know, in terms of, like, size, the Beaumont's, you know, significantly smaller, so I would probably go then with a Collier, because the Collier would be a, a larger... Or like the Herald too. The Herald's discontinued though, but well, the Herald now that's a custom pen though, right? Right, right. So right. you would have to pay probably twice as much for a custom Edison than right. you would for an SD. Now I love the SD. I love the. I have two of them here. I have the uh, tortoise shell. I've never seen anything in nature that looks like this. I've never seen a tortoise that has this shell. Have you? No. No. I don't know why they call it tortoise shell, but it's called tortoise shell. Um, I love these pens. I love them to death. You already have one. Which one do you have? What's his I'd name be curious again? to know also too is that if if he has the uh, MV adapter because that's what I have on here the, with a vintage uh, Estabrook nib, which what I think. What does MV stand for? Uh, I think it might be like modern vintage. Oh, that's modern, what it is. Modern vintage. vintage right? I was it's, guessing that's what it right. was. It's not motor vehicle. This has nothing to do no. with the automobile industry. No. Um, I suggest. Yeah. Because yeah. I love this pen here. This one here is the Conklin Word Gauge Stealth. And the reason why it's called the Word Gauge Stealth is because it has the um, carbon fiber. And it has, an, it has a really big ink window. It has a twist piston fill. I love this pen. I love this pen. That's, that's what I would say, because you're also in the, the same price range. And it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, or Carter says, I have the cobalt blue one. Uh, and I do have the adapter, but they sent the super fine, so I'm going to look for a different vintage nib. Yeah, you could go on eBay, which is what I did for mine. I looked on eBay, and I, I bought a pretty expensive one because it's kind of, like, rarish. That's the, the flexible one, the 9128. Um, but there's a helpful guide on a well-appointed desk as far as, like, there's, like, a picture that has all the different uh, nib designations, like, and the numbers that associated with them. So 
I would then go to eBay and like say, oh, I want like a stub or I want something that does have flex and then just type in like the number, like that's a four digit number and the name of the nib and you probably could find uh, somebody who's selling it or somebody who's also selling like a batch of them too. So that's another uh, option there. But that, that, ha that this Estabrook has a lot of fun that is associated with it because of the fact that you could swap out those nibs. And the reason I was also mentioning Edison is because they also, if you want to go with another pen that had a Yovo nib, a number six size, you get the Collier, which is a similar size to this, and then you would be able to swap out the Edison nib because the Edison nib is a is a number six Yovo. Do you do that often? So it depends. Like I if, do. I, if I took it, like I know it's the same nib unit. Yeah. But if I swap this out with like an Edison, it would bother like, you because it's a different. Oh, brand. I feel like I would be tased. I'm like getting tased <laughs> every single like, every time I look at it. It's like an Edison on an Easterbrook. Esterbrook. I feel like I'm being tased. <laughs> But this is a fantastic pen, Carter. You know, I think you got a lot of life left in this one. You know, I'm not saying don't buy another pen, but I'm saying learn the nuances. Enjoy the pen that you have, you know, before you go dropping more coin on more pens because what you have is really good. But when you're after a while and you, you've been through inks and you've written with this pen and you want to try a new flavor, you know, then I would say definitely go with the uh, word gauge. But I think, I think some people should, because I, I am a victim of such things. Mm -hmm. You keep buying pens, buying pens, buying pens, buying pens, buying pens, which is not a bad thing. But sometimes you buy pens and then you forget to use the ones that you have. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't appreciate them as much Right. Anymore. With the Estabrook Esty, that is not a pen that you should forget to enjoy. Right. You know, I think, I think Carter's on the right path. I think he's, I think the incubation period is, is the well addiction. on its way, yes. and, and I think that you are infected with the fountain pen virus. But before you go bankrupt, I say enjoy your pen a little bit longer if you're just getting into fountain pens. You know, I have a buddy named June. He, uh, he, uh, you know, he recently was infected because of my Mont Blanc review. Oh, nice. Yeah, he went out and got a Metropolitan, then he got an Echo, and now um, he has a Paniter Avatar, the lipstick color, because okay. he likes red and stuff like that. And, and he's kind of slowing things down. He really enjoys using what he has. Yeah. And he's still browsing, still shopping, not saying I'm going to go buy the next thing I have, but he is waiting for the Homo sapien. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So he's the, enjoying what he has. He's, he's got the grail pen lined up. Right. But he's not going to try to like distract him in between. Right. Yes, Chris. Next question. Uh, Nicholas Sully asks, Lamy Vista versus Twisby Eco T Demonstrator. Thoughts? Oh, well, they're two different. I think they're totally different. Lamy Vista is a cartridge converter fountain pen. The Lamy Vista is also mm. the same thing as a Lamy Safari. It's just a clear pen. Right. So a clear pen <clears throat> that has a gap, a hole in the middle of the body so you can see how much ink is in the converter kind of... Does it make sense? It, it does have some redundancies. Yeah, it does, you know? a little bit. The Twisby, what did you say, the Twisby Echo? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. Twisby Echo T, or even the regular Echo, you know, unless you get the all transparent one, it's colored. It has like a colored cap and a colored end cap. That thing is a piston fill. It's uh, the plastic that's made of pretty sturdy. It comes with the uh, number four, I think, the number four nib with the, uh, with the feed. Those are solid buys. 28 bucks are solid buys, yeah. 100%. If you ask me, if, since they're about the same cost, which I would go for, I'd go for the Twisby Echo all day long. I would probably go, I'm, I'm gonna take the other counterpoint and just say like, uh, my personal experience with, with Twisby has not been as, you know, I, I, I have, the when I had gotten like the 588 was a while ago, mm -hmm. uh, and I've seen this with other people too, is that they've had some issues with like, sections and you know the things like that kind of crack or or that need replacement and but like i've always known for uh lamy especially the safaris and and the vistas to be uh extremely sturdy uh especially over the long term people are people beat the the bejesus out of their their lamis and and show them off and say it's like oh i have mine in my pocket and it still is you know nothing's cracking you know right right so, my, my uh twisby uh diamond hold on which one is it Oh, back uh, mini. I have a Twisby back mini. Right. The cap is already cracking right above the center band. So yeah, you do have cracking issues with the Twisby. Which I mean, like to their credit, though, they get right on top. Oh of yeah, it, they, and do, they, said, they do. Which people rave about as well. But like, you know, the fact is, it's it's kind of like the I don't know if you're familiar with the the Xbox. 
Of course. With the Red Ring of Death. Oh, yeah. I feel like it's the Red Ring of Death. It's like it's inevitable for somebody to experience it, but like why is it there to begin with? Like right. why is there like almost like a, uh, a, 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 a scheduled defect within the item, yeah. you know? Yeah, there when, is that. when there's when there's something out there that could already just you know you could pick it up and what not is, have to worry about that. What is up with that huge controller? Do you remember that? The yeah. huge like it, it's like you're sitting there with it. I mean, uh, listen, they they created Halo, so I and I love Halo, mm -hmm. Gears of War, so I can't really complain. Um, you know, another thing to consider is if you're if you're also a newer user and you're not used to bottled inks, are you a cartridge converter guy? Are you a the cartridge guy or are you a bottle ink guy if you're a bottle ink guy and you don't like using con cartridges i'd say go for the twisby echo yeah and you're it, looking for that massive incapacity right. too it has a huge incapacity if you like switching out inks all the time then maybe the lamy is probably more your taste if you don't uh, unless you don't mind cleaning out the inks all the time me for some reason i can never get through one entire refill on like a Twisby or anything like that. Anything with a piston filler, because they yeah. have such high ink capacity, but with something like a cartridge converter, um, I can get through it and then I can change it up with different inks, yeah. different stuff, because I, uh, I do this thing by some nutty guy out there, what's his name? I forgot his name, but it, he does this thing called Ink Journal, and then he sends you these boxes of ink samples. And uh, so I've been doing that, and I'm using different inks all the time. So, I've so noticed, when you're constantly changing things right, out. So I like... noticed with that, subscription i'm using like cartridge converters instead of piston fills the piston yeah, fills is yeah the piston fills is what i use for my standard like everyday ink something that i'm going to use every day as opposed to just trying something out like i yeah. like this one called uh is karen no j herbin mm. egypt something it's like oh, Cor coraline coraline the, the, the sparkly orange one yes and it has like the glitter in it i put that inside my uh this is a pen that I, I really like i stick it into this pen a lot uh, the Conklin Orange oh, Nights. Yeah, it's a good it, match I think for it, it really works well. Yeah. This one has a uh, <coughs> converter, so it works because one whole fill. Oh wait, what is that? I think I changed that ink. One whole fill is like half the vial, mm -hmm. and then I can I can bang it out in a couple of days, and then I can change it with something else, easy to clean. Can't really do that with the yes, piston fill. Okay, so uh, Beth Autre asks, "Can a nib get worn like sides of tires get worn? I seem to have issues like this with all my pens." What does she mean by worn? I'm guessing like the 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 iridium tipping is get, it gets worn after a while. The iridium's a very hard material to to wear down. Well, first of all, are tips really made with iridium, or is it just an alloy that everybody's generally? Well, I mean, like alloy. I mean, also too is like golds are all alloys right. too. I mean, it's, uh, even if you're talking 14 carat, it's only 50 percent, like a little bit more than 50 percent gold. What is the other stuff that's in there? You don't know. But like iridium's the same same deal. I have to be honest. I, I don't think that they wear out like tires you know i think uh i think they're designed to resist the friction and drag against paper paper is obviously a lot smaller than the tipping or the alloy i don't know what you're experiencing maybe you can clarify well maybe too is that if the paper is really toothy or if you're writing on like something that has a very abrasive type of surface, you know, that could also... I don't even think that would do it, though. No? I mean, how long do you have the pens? I mean, I, I really think that... Think about this. I have vintage pens that have tipping on it that, mm -hmm. that doesn't really seem worn out. And right. They could be 100 years old or... or so, but then again, I wasn't around 100 years ago, so I don't know. But in my personal opinion, I don't think that happens. I think what you're experiencing is probably different issues. Maybe as you're writing, maybe your paper is more fibrous than other papers. Hey, stuff could be getting right. stuck in the slit. So it's, so it's, as you're writing, it's dragging up like small particles of paper that are fibers that you're not seeing. Maybe if you floss out your times, maybe that'll help. Yeah. Be kind to your times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Manuel Bazan, probably slaughtering these names, but he asks, what do you think about the Italian pen Leonardo Officina Italiana? You, those pens look no gorgeous. I don't know anything about them. I would really love that's to, to carry those. Um, it's that's the, they have uh, Bach nibs, and hmm. I I could probably bring it up on my because I I like all of their photos. It looks very much like a kind of like has like an Omas, but like a you know it definitely has an Italian feel to their designs. I'll bring it up on here so you can take a look at what he's talking about. Is it a newer brand? I mean I don't know. It is it is like relatively newer. But oh, they wow. have they have like exclusive with uh, Fanta Plumo. Um, yeah, if you want to take a look. So so this is Leonardo. They got some some really nice uh, 
beautiful shots of pens in here. Like this is, I think, the Memento Zero. Uh, I think there's um. They look like celluloid. Are they celluloid? No, or are they it's acrylic? resin. This is, yeah, acrylic resin. Wow, that's really nice. They have some sharp stuff wow. there. They have the, they use the Greek key symbol. A lot of Italian brands use the Greek key symbols. It's called Greek to Italians. I mean, they're very their their histories are very intertwined with the Etruscans and you know the the the, the actual. Um, the actual founding of the country, you know, it's a, it's 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 a, a lot of it is very Greek influenced. So, as far as like arts and culture and whatnot, but, um, a little sidetrack, but we'll uh, <laughs> smart people talk. So, so one of the things um, me pretending to be interested. No, I'm just kidding. I'm interested. <laughs> so one of the things we were mentioning was uh, the Ohio Pen Show um, this weekend, Friday through Sunday, Crown Plaza Dublin Hotel in Dublin, Ohio. Mr. Fountain Pen Day himself, Kerry Yeager. Um, and also Edison Pens too, which we have some Edison Pens out here too, uh, will be uh, in attendance there and uh, a lot of other retailers. I think Anderson Pens will be there, so Anderson Am Avenue with the blue tables and everything. So did you get to experience Anderson Avenue when you were there at uh, Long Island? Uh, uh, were I, they there? I forget. They, I think they were and I walked by, but I was kind of like, I was kind of like, my head was spinning because there were so many pens and everything like that. Yeah. And I had a limited amount of time too. I went with a buddy and we had to leave. So when I got there, my first objective was just to, you know, hang out with uh, Linda Kennedy and Richard Binder and say hi to them and right, stuff right. like that, because they're good people. Yeah. And while I was doing that, you know my attention span. You jingle yeah. something shiny at me and I'm all over the place. There was pens everywhere. It was like, it, w it was like a candy land. For, for, more, for people with normal attention spans, it's overwhelming. For your attention span. Oh, it's like just grenades like, going off yeah. all around me. Holy cow. And I wanted to buy the whole place. The whole place. Oh, you know who I met? Who's that? Xu Jin Lu of uh, Tachia Pens. Oh, okay. And you know what it was funny is I did a review <coughs> on the Tachia Spectrum. This is one of my favorite pens. And in that review, my god, I was ruthless about how forest green is not green. And I was making fun of her. And then <laughs> in the review. Yeah, and then I go up to Not her, to her face. <laughs> well, no, not to her face. Knowingly. So I went up to her not knowing what she looked like. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah, I did a review on it and I made fun of the uh, designer, Xu Jen Lu, because apparently she's colorblind and she would be a disaster at traffic lights because that thing would turn green, she thinks green is something else and she would never be moving around. And I kept going and going and going. Thank God her, thank God I was talking too fast because she didn't really pick up on it and she's like, oh yes, I'm Xu Jen Lu. I'm like, oh, oh. Nice right, to meet so you. I gotta go. <laughs> thank you, bye, and I left. But uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I didn't get to see the Anderson table. I might have, but not realized, because yeah. I literally had my head down looking at pens, walking sideways like a friggin' crab, yeah. you know, looking at all the pens and stuff. So if I wasn't, like, chilling out with uh, Richard Binder and Linda Kennedy, I was in, like, total dog-sniffing pen mode, just sitting <laughs> running around, sniffing around pens like, and oh, stuff. Oh, 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 nice meeting. Yes. It, oh, sorry. It was awesome. It was awesome. I can't wait for the next pen show that I get to go to if I have time. So, uh, C. Kahua says, my missus just got me a precious Pilot Custom 823, nice. but it feels so delicate, I just keep it at home. Oh. Do folks have a pen for home and a pen for work or outdoors? Okay, any workhorse all. pens, sorry, any workhorse pens in the same class as the Pilot Custom 823? Okay. First of all, your wife, a keeper. Yes. She's a keeper. I don't care if she tells you to clean the dishes, do the laundry, clean the bathroom. You do it. You do that with a smile yes. on your face. Yes. <laughs> she got you a custom 823. She's paying attention. Yep. She's a good woman. The custom 823, it's, it feels delicate, but it's not as de So my thing is this. If you're going to have a pen, like I take pens with me right. in situations where I probably shouldn't take pens with me because they're, they're, they might be more volatile than I expect them to be. And But here's the thing, though. If you're at work and you're worried about it, create a procedure. When everything's about to go south and and, I don't know, you might get into a situation where impact may happen. This is what I do. I take my pen out. I turn to one of my guys and I say, they already know what to do. They take the pen, they secure it to a safe place, and I do what I got to do. And then when I'm done, I come back and I retrieve my pen. I, th I think that if you're going to have a really nice, like this pen here, this is an expensive pen. If I had this pen and I wanted to use it, I'm going to take it with me and I'm going to use it. It doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing. Yeah, some people don't have it, any problem. They don't bat an eye with, like, let's say, bringing a, a $1,000 pen out with them, and they'll just even just throw it in their pocket. Like, they're just like, oh, yeah, good. No, they just they throw it in their, their jeans pocket, and they, they just whip, 
out like a thousand dollar Machi A pen. But then some people also in the flip side too, some people get really nervous about bringing out, you know, like pens that are like 40 bucks and 50 bucks. So it's really kind of like relative to your risk tolerance. And mm -hmm. it's also uh, about how you kind of treat your other items too. I mean, people are walking around with like $800, $1,000 cell phones that all that's protecting them from oblivion is just a very thin plastic case. So it's like, you know, you kind of have to, you know, kind of like work with that, that there's that thin line of like, well, am I comfortable enough to bring like a custom 823 out to work? Well, am I also like comfortable enough to like, you know, be responsible with anything else that I have that's like somewhat precious and expensive on me? So, you know, it's a kind of like a, just, just, it's an analyzing your ability to, uh, you know, to take risk and keep, you know, take care of your things. And you know what, and it, you gotta also think like within reason, like if you're a construction worker, right, right. and you're leaning over things, so I, I read somewhere or heard somewhere this guy was leaning over because he's something and he's a construction worker and then it broke his pen. If you're in that kind of field or something like that, then, then get a pen that you like that's appropriate to that, like a Keras Custom or something. <coughs> I would think tough. a Kaweco, uh, uh, an All Sport is nice because like that would be like a aluminum barrel pen, it's a pocket pen, so like you could just throw it in your pocket and not have to worry about it being so long where if you lean over something, it would break or bend or something. So it's kind of more stoutish. Do they have ones in brass? Oh yeah. Oh, brass. They have yeah, brass, they, they have stainless go. steel, they have uh, the aluminum ones, which are which are probably the more affordable ones. But yeah, they're metal bodied, so they, they take to a beating. So. Oh, you know what else is good? The copper mule. That too. The copper mule, because, because that one looks better the more beat up it gets over time. Yes. You know? But that's a $400 pen, so it depends on what your budget is, but yeah, you know, so that's I, that's a good work. My thing is this: if you, if you have a pen that you like and you want it with you because it makes you happy, then take it with you. Just don't yeah. lose it. You know? Just just try not to lose it. Right, it's easy possible. not to lose. And lose then stuff. if you do lose it, then your wife would have another gift for you, like let's say in a year or so, which would be the replacement of that pen. So. It would be an easy one, like, because I know go. sometimes I'm scratching for ideas for gifts and everything, so if something gets lost that's, like, was really valuable and the person, like, is heartbroken about it, that's, like, the first thing I think of is, like, oh, I'll just replace it. It'll be, like, this such that's, and such That's gift. dangerous. What kind of wife do you have? Is she the type of <laughs> wife that will be upset if you lose a gift she got you, or is she the type of wife that will feel sorry for you and get you another one? Like, my wife, if I lose something that I like, she would feel bad for me and get me another one. I just realized I could take advantage of it. <laughs> <laughs> what have I been doing all these years? I lost my years? entire pen collection. It's like, oh man. <laughs> you know, I went to Gold Spot and I just mm. lost all. I just my lost pens. everything. I just and I just bought like all these new pens and I lost them all. Oh, this. No, I think she would see through that. The good thing about me and my wife is, she's so good at seeing right through me. She knows when I'm lying, when I'm not lying. Yeah. You know, so it, it's really tough to get one past her. She's she's too smart. She's gorgeous and she's smart. That was a combination. You know, well, no, it's just the worst combination. You can't get away with anything. <laughs> yes, Chris. Oh, okay. So just to follow up and then another question, Sikahua says, uh, great points. What was his name? Sikahua. I don't know how oh. he would say the whole username, but that's how it appears. Uh, great points. Thank you, guys. And P.S. The wife is also a fountain pen fan. Nice. Uh, she's most precious. Maybe time for a gold spot tactical pen case. Oh, nice. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, to follow that up, uh, Nicholas Sully once again asks, uh, favorite pen for sketching? He says he uses a uh, new blues Ahab, but are there any others you can think of? Okay, for sketching. Well, I mean, you've, you've done yeah, quite well, a few well, drawings before. Right. So, like, what kind of sketching are we talking about? I'm familiar with, like, comic book art and stuff like that, where, like, line variation's important, hashing and stuff like that. Um, believe it or not, for me, when it comes to sketching, I like... I don't actually like the Noodler's pens. Here it comes. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just waiting for it. Am I allowed to say? Um, you could. You could probably. You could probably describe. You okay. know, let's let's talk about it in other terms of like, uh, it's it's uh, you know just like. So for me, <laughs> I feel like what Noodler's uses to make Noodler's pens absent the acrylic models, the or material. Ebonite. Or the, yeah, the ebonite or the, the, the weird resin. I, I really think they're recycling, like, diapers, used ones, <laughs> to make it because they smell so bad. And then um, the nibs, they're not bad. They require a lot of tinkering. So that kind of drives me nuts. I like the Falcons, the Pilot Falcons. Yes, yeah, Because absolutely. with the Pilot Falcons, especially the Extra Fine, the Extra Fine is not the most pleasant feel because it's so sharp, right? So right. it feels like you're taking a needle and you're writing with it. But 
you know, you're not doing it for the purpose of writing and you're not going to be doing pages and pages of writing. You're doing it for the purpose of effect and line variation, creating depth in the drawing. I like those because you can get a good amount of line vari variation on it. If you want a thicker line, the fine is also pretty fine, but it gives you a good line variation. I never went down to the medium. But if I had to draw something right now, I would probably use one of the Falcons. That's yeah. just me. No, that's... He, he did add uh, Flexnip specifically, just to guide the discussion. Yeah, that, I mean, that, and that Falcon is, is a perfect, because I, I, the price points are, is good on it. Um, if you're looking for something with a little bit more of a variation, the, I would go with the Custom 912 in the, in the, in the FA nib. The FA nib, yeah. right. That the was, FA. I honestly think when it comes to drawing, and I'm not the best artist on the planet, um, I think the line variation from like a falcon mm -hmm. is sufficient. If you need a thicker line than that, I think you need more control. I think you should have thinner lines with line variation and then add to it as opposed to having a pen that will just <coughs> do the full line right. at once. Or at that point, you could even just take out a paintbrush and, and do like, if you're doing, because especially too, if you're doing drawing or sketching illustration and you're doing, let's say, a wash or something, you might already have a paintbrush on you. So like, might as well just, if you're looking for that really broad, like, stroke, or you're right. looking to fill a large area, just use a paintbrush. Yeah. Oh, you know what else <laughs> What else is also good? It's not as fine as the, uh, the uh, whatchamacallit, the Falcon. But I'm really surprised at how well this pen functions. The, uh, the one you sent me, the green one, the Monteverde. Oh, the, the, the Monza? The Monza yeah. Jolly Green. Now, in all candid f honesty, because that's what I believe in, the Omniflex nibs that are on the... Duragraph, the number six size ones. Right. They are just not good. You know, there, there, there are so many problems with it. Ink starvation. And that has a lot to do with the feed nib relationship. But the number five is amazing. It is my favorite steel flex nib to date, hands down, because it doesn't require any tinkering. Mm -hmm. It has no tinkering. It does use that cheapy plastic feed that has the two ink channels. Right. But the surface area on the flex nib is small enough that as the ink is going through the channels, when you write with it, it's enough, it's small enough that the ink channels, the capillary action causes the ink to come together and it provides ink. I, I don't get much skipping. I don't, I give that pen the nod over the Noodler's Nib Creeper. Yeah, it's only 16 bucks too. It's, yeah, it's 16 bucks. I'm surprised. Now, there's people out there like, oh, it's a Jin Hao. 992. They are 100 percent right. It is yeah. absolutely the Jinhao 992. Jinhao nine nine twos don't come with that nib though. But that's the thing. Yeah. You could get a Jinhao nine nine two and then buy the nib separately. But right. then but the nib is expensive, yeah. So you're paying about the same price. Right. And you're not getting the warranty that Monte Verde right, yeah. gives you. Which is always good because that's lifetime. Yeah. They 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 do that. And I and I like that. You know. So I'd rather get that one. If I'm not getting the flex nib, then I would just get the Jinhao nine nine two. But that pen, that flex nib pen is is my favorite. I, yeah. It used to be the FPR. Right, the, the right. Right, this one yeah. bumped it out of the spot. So if you're looking for like a cheaper, you know, version, so so like for sketching, do the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, I'm messing, I'm saying Jin Hao. Monteverde uh, Monza. Monteverde Monza, Monza Jolly, Green. Jolly Green with the Flex, or you could uh, then for the more pricier version, you could go for the, uh, the Pilot Falcon, um, which ranges, I think, about like 150 or yeah, something. Yeah, it's 160 like or something. 160. But then there's the metal, all metal one. Yeah. It gives it a lot more weight. Yeah, looks, I think but it looks a little classier too. It is, but like I mean, you're paying for it, so like then it goes up for to I think two something. Two yeah, but I like the there. fact that the metal Falcon, you can get that Con seventy. Oh yeah, yeah. It has a lot more ink. Oh man, those Con forty converters, man. So I don't. I do just, just do not like those. <laughs> but I know it's like they rattle around. They got too many ball bearings in them. They don't draw up ink to its fullest capacity. You right. have to do the. You have to do the fill it. Turn it back up, yeah, push out all out the, air, the air, and then do that bring again. it back up. They they need to bring back the con fifty, I think. Why 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 replace it? It was good to begin with. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh well. Okay, so one of the things too about fountain pen day, let's say it's starter fountain <coughs> pen set. So we're getting some suggestions about like what to do in particular situations. But like let's say if we were to send a package to somebody who is remotely interested in writing, and you wanted to get them hooked on fountain pens, what would something be put together that you could do that would be like inexpensive but like get somebody into fountain pens so like what's inexpensive because that's a real i'm saying like all together let's say everything is under like 40 bucks oh that's a good one. Oh, like a full like a full complement of solution because we're not only talking like the fountain pen we're also talking about like ink we're talking about paper we're talking about trying to get people into the idea of 
using and maintaining a fountain pen? So I always think about this, and it, I think it depends on who you're giving it to. Like, if you're giving it to a younger person, right, or a trendier person, I would have to like my, Metropolitan. Yeah, that that's 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 hands down, you know, a win. 100% of the time. Under 20 it. bucks for the pen. Right. Under, it's so, reliable. Exactly. It comes in, you have the fine, medium, and also a stub nib, too, if they want to get adventurous. So, you know, to get into the whole calligraphy type of thing, you could you could even offer that. Does it still come with a converter? Yes, it does. Okay, so you got the converter. It comes with ink cartridges. Right. Like, if it were me, I would say this. I would get package a Pilot Metropolitan, a bottle of ink sample, not, not just one bottle, but... Just like the a package of yeah, you know, yeah the, a package the, of ink samples with ink like samples. like the ones what we do with the, the 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 box that has the pen and then the five ink samples. Have oh you yeah, seen like those? yeah, like the like the ones that come in in these guys. I never got one of those. No, you never got one of these. No, I never got one of those. So so and we have some stuff in here, but um, what we've been doing is we have this for a Pelicano up, and we also have this for some uh, it's Pen BBS pens. Pelicano, I like the Pelicano. So we have the Pen BBS pen, and then we have the five ink samples in here, so you'd be able to have. You know, because the pen BBS comes with the converter inside, mm -hmm. so you'd have the ink samples and everything. So you'd have, and it comes in the gold spot box. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is perfect. I never got one of these boxes, Tom. And see, but... this is the HSN section of our, uh, HSN is Home Shopping Network, by the way. Oh. So. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. I'm like, what is it? Is it make it funny? I think this would be, so like, I would do this. I would, I would put a pen. So I have three pens in mind, and you stole one of them, even right. though you asked me the question. Right. Pen BBS, Pilot Metropolitan. And the Parker Jotter, because the Parker Jotter is still coming with the converter. Yeah, we're we're still doing that. We're still yeah. doing that, right? I put the pen with the with the converter in there. Five ink samples. I would also give them. Um, they need they need some sort of good paper. Yeah, the right way. I wouldn't send them like a mead. I would because send them, all of a sudden, if you were to get somebody give somebody a fountain pen, they just write on any old paper that they had laying around. Oh, it's a deterrent. It would be like, 100%. wait a second, this is like bleeding and feathering right. all over the place, and I just, I just like saturated this paper, like, uh, you know, like I just blew my nose in it. It's just it's like it's all over the place, like it's, you know. So if you have Rhodia, Claire Fontaine paper, and they come in all sorts of different sizes as far as the pads are concerned, so you can even just put like a little small pad mm -hmm. just to show, like. Well, this is how it looks like on good paper versus you know anything else that you might have recycled or otherwise. I would also make sure that the pen that you send them, whether it's the obviously the Parker, it comes with its own cartridges. I would throw in a box of cartridges with that as well. Right, just because in case they want to. They may not be brave enough, or they may not be like, oh, I don't know what to do here. I'm not. I'll do it later. They might just want to use cartridges. Right, to just the so pop and play. If you were sending them the pen BBS, I would send them, instead of sending them the 309 with the right. piston filler, I would send them the 308 or the 266. They're the same thing, the 266 slash right. 308. Because then they have the option. <coughs> right. Or the 349, the pen BBS 349. With the metal. Right, yeah. Right. I got Because then they actually have the option. They don't have to use the converter, in which case sometimes, for them, the concept of doing that is kind of treacherous if you've never used a fountain pen before. Right. Some people just want to use cartridges, so let them do that. Yep. But at least they know that they have that ability and then they got paper. Yep. That's what I would do. Yes, sir. Another question. Uh, Beth Autre, another... Uh, is that asks, the same Beth from before? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, so what, is <laughs> what is closest to the Nikko G nib in fountain pen world? I'm wanting something similar to something like a dip nib. A con oh, convenient supply of ink for calligraphy. What a perfect segue. What's the Nico G? The Nico G is just like the Zebra G. It's 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 a lot like it's a lot like the the guy that I have on here. Oh, that is like such a perfect segue for what we were talking about. Yeah. So yeah. So did uh, she post that? Chris is showing. No, I'm showing it here. Oh. Yeah. So let's see. It's got like the cutouts just like this one has. So this is yeah. the this is the Zebra G nib, and this is a uh, this is a project that we're working on with Pierre from uh, Desiderata Pens. Um, this is called the the model is called the Procession, and what we're doing is we're working together with him on this because uh, a lot of people tend to do the uh, the whole let's let's modify uh, a Jinhao or uh, try to fit one of these uh, Zebra G nibs on something else. If you want, Chris, you could. Um, he's gonna give yeah. this a go and try to get yeah. So it's going here. So um, so we're working on this with him. And Pierre's typically known for his Daedalus and other models that are adaptable to use the uh, the Zebra G nib. Uh, but of course, the Zebra G nibs you need to prime them correctly. And I was just uh, showing Roy this morning that I had a potato out on my desk, 
and uh, it did the trick as far as priming this nib to uh, get it to write with fountain pen ink because typically right out of the box uh, the, the Zebra or the Nico G nibs or any sort of calligraphy nibs um, have this anti-rust coating that uh, that stymies fountain pen ink. It doesn't fully coat the nib. So um, what we did, what I tried doing was like what Pierre recommended uh, using the uh, using like a toothbrush with toothpaste, but it didn't really work out that well. So I stuck it in a potato and it worked out very nicely to get this pen, um, you know, flowing consistently. Uh, so it's got, uh, this has got uh, Robert Oster Orange Rumble. And uh, uh, like I mentioned, it's something that we're working on with uh, Pierre. And uh, we're hoping to get a full production line of these guys uh, available and uh, ready to purchase within the next few months. But um, this is a, uh, a vacuumatic sort of filling system. Uh, best way I could explain it is that it's, a, it's kind of like the, uh, the Twisby Go in the fact that it's got a spring-loaded uh, filling mechanism that you would uh, remove the blind cap and then actuate the, the pump that's in there and it's got the O-ringed uh, piston that's inside that uh, removes the air when you press down and then sucks up the ink when you let go on it and the spring action is quite uh, nice on that. It's an ebonite uh, mechanism as well. So, and. Uh, I, I appreciate the fact that Roy's doing this handwriting sample now because I can't, I wouldn't be able to talk and give you the background information and write at the same time. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a luxury. Oh, check this out. This is made of ebonite. Yes, it is made out of ebonite. Yep. That's so, really cool. Look at that. If you were to press down on that, you'd probably squirt. It completely. doesn't smell like a butt. No, it does not. That's, that's whoever made this good job <laughs> because it doesn't, you used ebonite that doesn't smell like the insides of a dirty diaper. So to answer, so to answer your question, Beth, in the like most roundabout way as possible, is that we're trying to work on something that would be accommodating for that sort of flexibility. Because I'm a big fan of of flexible pens, uh, you know, flex nibs in general. And I, you know, I, I, the the zebra or the calligraphy style nibs, like the pumpkin nib from uh, from Browse, they offer unparalleled uh, nib variation, a line variation when you compare it to other fountain pen nibs that are supposed to be flex nibs. Uh, so, and, and really it's been a very difficult, uh, you know, problem to have as far as like trying to adapt those nibs to a fountain pen and try to get them to feed fountain pen ink. Um, but we're trying to work on it so that we could get something together with uh, uh, Desiderata pen. So I'm pretty excited uh, about how that project is shaping out. And I'm glad that you asked that question because I was intending on showing that pen in the video today, so. Speaking of which, yo, remember that question that dude was asking about drawing? This this is pretty solid. Look yeah, at, that look is. at this drawing of that is pretty nice. Some, some guy here. Like, <laughs> you just drew like a Simpsons -esque drew, sort of guy. I drew just this that this guy. <laughs> it's supposed to be somebody, but the line variation and and it's very like easy to to press. Yeah, it is. It's just like it's. It, it really is a lot of fun and it lets up when you let up on it it provides a like an ultra extra fine line so even if you don't put any pressure on it you'll get a very very thin line but then the slightest bit of pressure it opens up those tines and lays down a beautiful line of ink so so but, so you stuck it in a potato overnight and that's how so I stuck the right? nib I stuck just the nib just the actual nib and those and those the the other issue with those is that the the nibs aren't meant to last like a standard stainless steel nib because they are not your typical fountain pen nib. Are um, they made of stainless steel or are they made of chrome? I believe they're chrome. And I think there's I think there's other ones that are available in titanium as well. Mm -hmm. So I think those last a bit longer, but if you care for your uh, if you care for your your nib and uh, and you know make sure it's cleaned out routinely, I think it probably will last uh, a while. How much the nibs? I I think for a pack of them I, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure, but they're not that expensive to get like a pack of like five or ten of oh, them. Really? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's talking like less than ten bucks, I think. They're not tipped. So they're not they're not tipped, but they just need that additional bit of preparation. In which case, um, you know, if we were to go ahead and, and have these pens offered, we would uh, either try to do the preparation beforehand so that you get a fully functional model uh, right out of the box. You wouldn't have to do the prep or we would do something where we would put like an instruction card and then also do a video to uh, show you that it is pretty easy to prep these guys. And then that way, when you do need to replace a nib, um, let's say in a few months or whatever like that, um, then you would be able to do it and not have uh, any issues with it. You ran out of ink. You got ink. Oh, you got to ink it up again? Yeah. Jeez. We could show them how to ink it. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk. We'll keep rambling while Chris goes and grabs a Chris, bottle of. Chris, could you get? There is a bottle of Orange Rumble that's in the um, in the cart that's next to both mine and Asha's desk. Mm -hmm. There is a bottle of that that's okay. sitting in there. If you could please. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. I wonder what happens. Can I squirt onto the page? Oh, look at that. Oh, there was ink in there. There's a little bit. Look at that. That's kind of cool. Oh, that, that, you're right. It is smooth. It's a it's a beautifully smooth it's action so smooth. going on. That's really nice ink. That is nice. That's why I picked. Really I picked as I wanted to match it with the. Uh, with it the really looks nice as a as like a. Stain. As like a splatter. Yeah, it's a splatter. Yeah. This is art. All right, it man. Is. Don't judge. It is very artistic. Look at that. Is that the Robert Thank Oscar? You, Let's fill this up. Hey, bring the camera. I want everybody to show. I want to show my awesome technique. This is how I stick pens into bodies of ink. I just don't do this with a vial, though. Don't. Well. <laughs> So he's making fun of me, and I'll tell you why. Because I took an ink sample vial, and I jammed my um, Twisby Vax 700 in it. I don't know why I thought this. I'm, like, later, I'm like, why would you think that, you idiot? I turned it upside down, and I just, you know, tried to fill it like, like it were like the Visconti. The inkwell. Ink ink well. And it sprayed everywhere. And it didn't just like squirt in one direction. It, it was like a universal spray across my kitchen. <laughs> And my kitchen light wasn't working for like a couple of days, mm -hmm. so you would be spotting ink. No, it's just not that. And I'd step on the ink spot that I didn't see, and then I'm walking around the whole house. And my wife was like, "What the? Why is there ink everywhere?" <laughs> Here's one I didn't get. It was on the ceiling, probably because of the. Look at that. Yeah, so you're just looking for like the bubbles when you don't see the bubbles to to come up anymore. Or, or the, and the, I don't think it really fills up. I don't think it fills up like completely all the way like all the way to like the, the top portion there, but you do get maybe like half of it. It can only fill as far as the piston goes down, right? Right. That's a good amount of ink, that's good enough. You didn't have the foresight to bring paper towels with you, did you? Uh, we, got, we got this we could use. This is a little I can grab some real quick if you want. What's that? I can grab some. hold the camera right there. I <laughs> there you go. Oh, someone also asked the correct spelling of uh, the person who asked the question about that pen. How to spell uh, the name Desiderata. of the pen? <laughs> who knows? Oh, Desiderata. Dis, dis, dis. Well, it's it's like it's like a, it's like it's like a it's a D E S. Uh, this is D E S I D E R A T A. I'm pretty sure. I can't grip. I can't look. I'm getting ink on my fingers. Yeah, ink. This is all Chris's fault because he didn't bring paper towels. Not, not too much paper towel. What am I going to do with all this paper towel? This is like the industrial paper towels, not very absorbent. What are we paying you for? <laughs> I'm not paying him anything, so. This is actually a really cool pen. I'm going to put it down over here. I'm going to re put the thing. Everybody saw that massively cool demonstration of how to fill this pen. I, I think I. Especially a little bit when you do like live videos and like it just doesn't work like exactly how you just had mentioned it was going to work. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I'm not selling the pen. <laughs> <laughs> really matters only to you. <laughs> but for you, I don't like it when that happens. What did you do? What's that? Oh. Now I'm dripping. Maybe some has to get on the top of it to kind of. You know what it is? I, I, maybe because I put the paper towel on it. We're experiencing technical difficulties, difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. If you look to your All right, right. Well, well, Roy is playing around with this, then we could, uh, I could, I could go talk about the next uh, uh, little item here. Um, yeah. So we were also. Oh, here we go. I got it. No, you didn't. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about uh, uh, various pens so far, and 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 one of the things you could do on Fountain Pen Day is, of course, purchase a new pen. Um, and I know Roy is taking back with him a couple of pens, if not, uh, one of the, one of the nicer, uh, uh, takeaways from today is that, uh, he gets to go home and, and play around with his new pens. Um, and one of the things I can that... can go home and play around with your pens. Yeah, I can play with my pens too. But the, uh, did you bring, you, you did bring it back over here or did you leave it at my desk? What's I think, that? I think the, uh, we're talking about the Franklin Christoph. 
Real quick, um, do you have an estimated price range for this new dip nib pen combination? I'm not 100% sure because we still have to work out mm -hmm. a lot of the details about that, but... Uh, uh, it's definitely going to cost money, though. It's going to cost money. <laughs> um, you know, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, but we will, you know, definitely avail the details as soon as they start to form up on there. But, uh, uh, you know, considering, you kind of take a look at, like, what... Um, Pierre usually charges for his desiderata pens. He does them all handmade. Like he's he's the chief, uh, the 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 chef cook and bottle washer, as I guess as they say. And uh, and so it's it's kind of like a, a you know a very limited sort of sort of thing. So it's it's going to be a little bit up there, but uh, you know we're hoping to try to bring it down What's up there? the price range, like thousands and thousands. No, not thousands. It's, probably, it's like probably like a the a few hundred, but I'm not. You know, don't quote me on that. So I'm just saying, like, it's going to be in in the ballpark of it's not going to be like fifty or seventy five dollars. It's going to be like oh, well over. I'm going to go get that Franklin Crystal. Okay. On the way back from the bathroom. All right. All right. Because I've been sitting here drinking Monster Energy drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got me. And water. That combination creates a need for the bathroom. All righty. So you have a question? Yeah. Well. So in the meantime, Renz Arbus asks: Safari or All Star? Safari or All Star? I would say. I mean, it depends on your overall, like, you know, do you need something that's got, like, a, a an aluminum kind of, you know, style to it? Um, or is, like, something that just is a normal knock-around type of plastic? Like, that's what Safari is all about. It's just, it's got a nice, like, strong ABS plastic, so you could bring it with you and just not have to worry about it getting beat up and, and whatnot. But um, the All-Star's got that aluminum type of finish and, and kind of has a little bit more ritziness and a little bit more... Uh, you know, uh, style to it, I would say, because of the fact that it has that, uh, it has that finish on it. And, uh, you know, it also has the translucent section too. So, uh, me personally, I like safaris. I would probably say safari over all star, but, uh, I know there's a, there's definitely camps for both. Um, there's people who would probably say like, oh no, 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 all star all the way, because, uh, it just, it's just a much nicer, uh, style version, but uh, I, I would say Safari is just definitely sufficient uh, for what you need it for. Um, and, uh, you know, while Roy's uh, headed out to the bathroom, he's going to grab door, that. There's a sign on the door that says, shh. <laughs> Why is that there? It's because we're recording. Oh. Did, was that close when you... When, yeah, yeah, it was close. Oh, it was close? Yeah, oh, but okay. I don't look at the door behind me when I close it. But then okay. I was like, well, coming in, it says, shh. Because no, I know sometimes they need to come in here to, to grab some stuff. So I just didn't want to like, you know, lock them out essentially. We were talking about like, we got, we got some, we got some shipping, you know, some, some inventory that's also in this room too. So we just uh, don't want, we'll make sure that everybody can get their, their pens shipped out. You got your <coughs> pens. Oh yeah. The Franklin Christoph. What were you talking about? I just interrupted. The no, where I, was, I was answering a question about uh, Safari or All-Star, just preference wise. Wow, that's a good one. I'll give you a clue. There was a right answer and a wrong answer. Oh, really? No. <laughs> that's a really sense. You know the thing about the All-Star versus the um, the Safari that makes it hard? You don't have the exact same colors. Right. You know, so they're the different colors. So, like, you might want a color and it's an All-Star. In that case, you'll like that one better because it's the color you want. Right. Whereas the Safari is made of, like, Lego toys melted down, right? It's the same ABS plastic. I don't know what ABS stands for. But that also, that's really durable, but it also scuffs easy. Mm -hmm. It's also thinner, believe it or not. It's a thinner pen than the All-Star. The All-Star is... Less slightly th yeah, cause thicker. The, yeah. the clip is also different. On the uh, Safari, the clip is rigid. Like, you can't, you can't, you can pull the top of it where it goes into the pen. It's just solid. On the All-Star, it goes in and out. You can actually adjust it. Did you know that? No, I did not know also, that. Also, the, uh, the thickness of the cap is different. The uh, bottom is also different in the construction. <coughs> if you look at the bottom of the Safari, it's just like filled in with plastic injection molded. It has these cutouts in it, whereas the All-Star is a separate piece capped in. It's, it makes a difference. Oh, here's another thing. I can't remember which is which, but on the All-Star, there's a difference in the grip section the All-Star has a different grip section than the... Oh, I know what it is. On the All-Star, there is like a ring at the base of the grip section. Right. And the Safari, it's on the base of... No, other way around. On the Safari, there's like a plastic ring. The black ring, right? Yeah, that it's black usually ring. Black, yeah. It's on the grip section. On the All-Star, it's on the body, not the grip section. Right. So, there's that. 
and you might just be walking around. I, I can't have rings on my grip section and have to go with the All-Star. You never know. But That's why there's camp. I, like I was saying, there's camps for both, but I, I say I usually prefer, if I'm looking for a pen that I could just, you know, knock around and just carry with me and know That's it's going to work, I, I, I would probably say Safari, just because of the fact that, you know, it's it's... I just I just want something just to bring and hang out, you know, just right with a moment's notice or whatever. It all starts the same way. All starts the same way, but I just feel like it's a little bit more of like a premium sort of finish. You know, it's also a little bit more expensive too. Because it's ten bucks more. Yeah. What do you got there? Cough drops. Nice. Oh, did you did you bring enough for everybody? <laughs> if you would like, go for it. <laughs> I got plenty. Um, I don't know. That's a tough call. That's a tough call because I like my Safari better because it's in green apple. Mm -hmm. If I had a did I say Safari or did I say All Star? You said Safari. Okay, yeah. yeah. I like the All Safari better because it has green apple color. Right. I don't have an All Star in green apple. Right. But if I did, I would like the All Star. There was the charged color. green. Did you did you like the charged green? It's too yellow. It's too, it's too yellow. Yeah, it's too yeah. yellow. You know. I gotcha. But I like the matte finish. I like the matte texture of right. the aluminum. I like that. I wish that were in green apple. Then I would like the All Star better. I don't know. They both. They're both. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way I see it. So you brought over the, uh, so this is what you're taking home with you. This is a Fountain Pen Day purchase, the uh, Franklin Kristoff Model 2. And uh, we were taking a look and unboxing this earlier in the week. And one of the things I noticed, yeah, if, it, uh, if you've had those before, is that the, uh, when you sometimes, when you turn the, the barrel to remove the cap, like sometimes the, the barrel wants to come off and not the, uh, not the... That's, that's an issue with any grip section that has a th grip thread. The threads are on the grip instead of the body. Right. That's any, any time. That yeah, and I noticed that with my, the, my, my Model 65 also has that sometimes too. I noticed that, uh, like it does help though, if you silicone grease the, the body threads and you, and you really do them nice and tight, that it will prefer unscrewing the cap rather than the barrel at that point. So, uh, so Roy picked up the, the Model 2 in the Bermuda blue, and it's an extra fine. Prefers usually like fines or extra fines, right? I do. Yeah. So this is a, ex another exclusive we were talking about, the, uh, the, the Siderata pen, but like this is an exclusive that we made up with uh, Frank and Kristoff. Uh, very limited at batch at first. We have 25 pens. Uh, we started releasing them on uh, Wednesday, and they've already started to sell. Uh, we do have a few more of them left. They're 175 is the uh, price for them. They come with the converter. Uh, they come in a nice gift box, which you can see here. And like I said, there was a video where we unboxed and, and did a whole writing sample uh, spiel on this uh, early in the week. So you can always check out that video too if you're further interested in it. But the, the material is like somewhat translucent. It's not, I wouldn't say it like it's like a demo or like a partial demo, but like you could definitely see through uh, certain parts of the uh, of the chatoyant acrylic resin that they use for this. So what do you think of it, Roy? I mean, I like Franklin Kristoff. I feel a little bit of heartache every time I see a Franklin Kristoff pen because uh, Jim Rouse passed. Yeah. And uh, the Sig nibs, once they're gone, they're gone. Yep. You know what I mean? They're no longer an option. And I felt like the Sig nibs was one of the one of the real things that made Franklin Kristoff. You know, like unique and unique and desirable, and, 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 and different. So, I mean, there's other reasons why a Franklin Kristoff is desirable: the, the polish, the acrylic, the uh, amount of work that they put into the actual pen. Mm -hmm. um, well, the two is that uh, the Masayama, <coughs> which is that's what I have here, is a uh, I have the medium cursive italic uh, done by uh, Mike Masayama, and that's one of the that's also one of the things that uh, I know somebody was asking about when we did the the live unboxing was that. Um, are Masayama nib grinds available on these pens? And they're not right now at the moment, but I could always ask if, if there's like an overwhelming response for them. I could see about uh, if we could get some of those in the next run, because like I said, we, we did 25 to start with here, but we're expected to do uh, multiple runs of this. So we'll be able to get up to 100 pens. So it could be possible if you guys really want, we could do Masayama nib grinds in a uh, future one, but I have to you know clear that first, so. I really like the way this writes. It's a it's a good Yovo nib. Yep. They call it high performance steel. Yes. That just translates to Yovo nib. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yovo nibs. Like, let me ask you something. Do you prefer Bach or Yovo? I would say Yovo. Why? Just generally, I just right out of the box, they are typically very pleasant. Uh, what I've experienced with Bach's 
in the past being that like Visconti uses Bach and, and also Cabejo uses Bach too, is that sometimes they could be kind of like hit or miss, that they could use a little bit of um, either like slight adjustment or they could use like a little bit of smoothing, but like Yovo in general, like just have been supremely pleasant like right out of the box, like inking them for the first time. You know, I really think that, uh, I, I agree with you 100% on that. Like I've had more issues with like the Viscontis that use Bach molds mm -hmm. and whatnot. But when it comes to the Palladium, I want to hold Bach a little bit less responsible because Palladium is such a soft, it's a different metal, it has a higher melting point, it's a different type of metal, and it's harder to work with. Right. You know, the, uh, even the best uh, Nibmeisters I've spoken to, that being Linda Kennedy and, of Independence and Richard Binder of The Last Jedi of Nib Grinding, they're, they're the most treacherous to work with because they're so soft and it's a different type of metal. Right. So that might not be Bach. It might be anybody who makes a Palladium nib is going to have the difficulties that Bach has experienced because I have steel Bach nibs. Right. But I notice I like them. I, and I can't honestly say I like Yovo better than Bach. But I do like how Bach nibs, they're, the fines are very fine and the extra fines are really fine. They're very true to what the name is. And I also think that the thickness of the nib itself is thinner than a Bach nib, so it has more bounce. Right. You know what I mean? And it's a different feel. Like, the Yovo nibs, they're known for being feedbacky, yet at the same time smooth. Mm -hmm. And the Bach has a different type of toothiness, pointed toothiness that I particularly like. So I can't really say. I've been trying to decide which I like better, but I can't choose. It's like choosing between... It's a real Sophie's choice, you know what I mean? <laughs> But I guess if anybody had to be the daughter in that story, I would probably use. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to have a gun to my head. <laughs> and then even then, you might not choose. You might I, not I choose in time. I don't know. So what's uh, a tough one? What advice would you give? Um, what let's say well, let me rephrase that. What advice would you do? You wish that you had when you started using fountain pens. Hmm. What advice? That's a good question. I don't know how to answer that. Well, I know when I personally, when I first started, I was a little nervous about just the, generally, like, the ink flow. So I started out with, like, extra fine nibs. And, and like, I was just like, I was like, okay, well, this is going to be, like, the closest thing to, let's say, using, like, a gel pen or something because it's going to be more restrictive in, in terms of its line. And I could write small and not have to worry about, like, you know, having to increase my handwriting size or or having to get like a whole different set of papers and things like that because to handle fountain pen ink but what i felt like i should have just done right off the bat was just say like it's okay to go with a medium or broad or like a, a stub nib mm. because i felt like i felt like as i've gone down i'm like i i really love just having a variety of different nibs including like a lot of different flexible nibs i just love the ability to just switch from you know having something that's very narrow and small to like something that has like that calligraphic flair um but it was something i was nervous about at first because i didn't know like how you know that was going to work out for you know my writing style you know what i i see the thing is like my personality type is like it's, it's tough because i wish future me went back in time and said listen dude you're about to spend 900 dollars on a pen don't do that just yet. I wish that was something somebody told me. The problem with that is, if someone told me, don't spend $900 on that pen just yet, I would tell them to take their advice and stick it. Because I would have gotten it anyway. Younger younger you would not have taken any of that. Yeah, younger you was in like a few years ago. <laughs> but that's the advice that I wish, I, if told to me, I would have listened to. Which brings me back to that other dude who was saying like he's got a few pens and stuff like that and he wants to see what the next pen is. Yeah. I really, like to him, I say... If you were me, and I'm talking to you who's me, I, I just lost track of what I was trying to say. I would say, <laughs> you know, hold off. Just, uh, you know, enjoy what you have for this a This was bit. the gentleman with the Estabrook. Right, yeah. he started off with, with the, the, with the uh, pilot, pilot Metropolitan. Metropolitan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was his name? Chester? Chester? Chester, Chester Whipplefilter. Chester, Chester... No, it's a, that's a Cars character. No, it's a... 
is uh yeah but that uh, i like the fact that you that people ask that kind of question because then right. they don't all of a sudden just jump into it that you're you're saying that what you just did was just you're like ooh nine hundred dollar shiny pen with awesome nib right i just jump into it and just be like i, I suffer the consequences right you know? you know what i mean and it's like so especially when you're earlier into your fountain pen virus infection sometimes the nuances of what makes <coughs> pens different is lost because right. you don't have the acquired taste just yet. You know yes. what I mean? Like, it's like sushi. If I gave you, like, three different samples of sushi and you ate it, you're going to just be like, they all taste like rubber bands or something, right? Or, or gelatin. Depends on your on your taste. But, right. Yeah. Now, let's say your years have gone by and you've been eating all kinds of sushi and you've developed a taste for it. Then you can taste the nuances between one dead raw fish versus another dead raw fish. Not saying pens are raw fish, but can you really in the very beginning tell a difference between a Franklin Kristoff mm -hmm. tuned by the dudes at Franklin Kristoff or, or Dudettes or an Edison tuned by the guys at Edison like now I can definitely tell there are two different writing experiences even though they're the same nib right but can my buddy who only started using fountain pens a couple of months ago can he really tell right so is it really worth it to him to spend more money on a two hundred dollar pen versus a Twisby that's only forty bucks, or um, the Metropolitan, or something like that. Right? Does he really know and feel the differences? Probably not. Yep. So to that guy, I would say, listen, you have a twenty dollar pen. I'd say get the Parker Trotter. I'd say get the um, the one we were just talking about, the one that we were arguing about, which is better, the Safari. I'd right, say right, get right. the All Star. I'd say get for get anything sub pen fifty dollars. Right? The Pen yeah. BBS. I get all of those things. And then start using them a lot. And then after a while, you're going to be like, oh, well, let me try this pen. You're going to feel a difference, right? Mm -hmm. So like this guy, Chester, who has the Metropolitan, he's going to use his Esterbrook SD. He's going to use his Metropolitan. What other, what other pen did he say he had? No, he was saying he was looking for a third Oh, one. he's looking for a third yeah, pen. Now, you're going to use those one. two pens over and over and over. And after a while, you're going to start feeling the difference. Well, the Metropolitan seems a lot smoother, and it feels like it's less drag on the paper, less feedback, My, whereas the Esther Brogesti has more feedback, you know, and then it's like, oh, I, I don't know which one I like better. Maybe he likes the feedback better. But if he doesn't know the difference, and if he can't feel the difference just yet, why spend more money? Right. Right? Until he says, you know what, I really do like the Esther Brogesti better because I like how it feels. The right. touch of feedback, I like how smooth it is, and maybe I don't like the, the Japanese pen because it's just too smooth. Right. Now, before he got that feel for the nuance imagine he goes and spends three hundred dollars on the pen and then two years down the line he's like man i wish this had more feedback right you know what i mean it's kind of it might hurt his overall experience it's enthusiasm for buying exactly. more pens if he spent a lot of money on one pen and not had that build up of context essentially with that's his. right that's right and that's, that's why i wish someone had told me <laughs> ease up because what is it the visconti homo sapien florentine hills right okay smooth as like butter on as smooth as a smooth <laughs> surface gets rubbed <laughs> I like to say as uh, smooth as putting a suntan lotion on a bikini model but I don't like smooth I like feedback mm -hmm. so that pen as beautiful as it is I don't get to use it as much because I, I prefer a steel Yovo nib over that like I prefer my Estherbrook SD over my nine hundred and one thousand dollar Florentine Hills you know what's up uh carter his name it was um oh, asked, i was right follows up yeah You're terrible with names <laughs> he follows up ultimate grail pen if money were no object well but by the way first thumbs up for he's he's stuck through i think he's probably in this for like an hour so he's been hanging out for a while thank you you rock carter <laughs> you rock. sorry we called you chester i didn't uh, say did i say chester yes you did i and said I went, carter and i went and i said chester whipple filter which is the cars character so. i called him chester yeah you called him chester i could have swore i said carter carter uh ultimate grail pen if money were no object ultimate grail pen if money were no see the thing is when you've acquired as many pens as i have because i acquire pens because i i review them on my channel right after a while what makes a pen grail stops being money right you know what i mean what makes a pen grail for me starts being the overall experience the quality control and as a result I mean, more than just those things. The writing experience, the quality control, the look, the feel in the hand, just construction. Every aspect about it starts to change. And it no longer becomes about money. Not that I'm loaded 
It's just that it becomes more about what the pen is to me when I'm writing it, how it feels when I write, what color it is, how it looks. If money were no object, I don't know. Well, Gee, I would I say also too is rarity plays a factor. And the, the, the one that sticks out in my head when I'm asked about like, okay, well, what, what grail pen would you go for? Uh, I'm actually thinking of like a Waterman vintage uh, red ripple with like a nice like heart, sh the, the pink, the pink heart nib. That's the flexible type of nib. So something that it's no long, it's going to be hard to get is going to be expensive. And chances are when you start snapping up the last of those things, you're just going to be able to buy them from collectors. You're not going to be able to buy them. Like you can't buy them like from a store. Like you have to buy them from either a vintage pen dealer, somebody who's got it in their collection. And that's what to me, like, cause of the rarity of it. And the fact that if I hold on to it, it will still continue to gain value you know, the, the, over time. So that's what, that's one of the ones that are always in the back of my head. That and also, because it's hard to get currently, but I'm trying to work on Pilot to bring them in, is a custom 823 with an FA nib. And those are only, right now, as far as I know, are, you can only They're find Japan those. Only. Yeah, you can only source those through a shop in Japan. And what they do to it, they, they put the FA nib on it, and they put the feed, and it's not technically considered to be like, part of the warranty because it's, they don't sell the pen with it on there. Oh, what I'm wow. trying to get them to do is import the pen and do it already. Like put it on there because people, because the ink capacity, the back fill and the FA nib is a perfect combination. I just wish they would just do it already. Please like email your congressman, email, <laughs> vote. We vote need this, to have our this president Tuesday. represent us and talk to their prime minister today and get them <laughs> the custom 823 with the fa nib but that that, that the, those two pens stick out in my mind particularly more about the waterman pen because of its rarity can you imagine that really came out like in the news like president trump today reached out to the prime minister to have the pilot <laughs> custom 823 with the fa nib people are gonna be like what in the absolute hell is he anyway <laughs> going back to, to chester's question carter's question um <laughs> the grail pen Thing. that's a tough one because you know what it is you're right it also comes to rarity but let's but money again money is no object so let's say it's rare and there's only two left in the world money is no object and you have a gazillion trillion dollars you can mm -hmm. buy that pen so forgetting so rarity doesn't count anymore because right. you have but i wouldn't want to go with like let's say getting let's say the aurora diamond pen that is like tens of thousands of dollars or it's like a million dollar pen or whatever that was at the dc pen show that they were showing off i wouldn't want to get like something like that because I feel like I would never be able to use it and then like if I put it home in a glass case like what is it doing there like it's you know what I'm saying like it just I hear you if if because that, that that's the whole money is no object thing is Chester still on the air or is he not because I, I have to ask him a question Ch uh, Carter is he still, still yeah he's he he's still with us all right so let me ask you this though does the pen exist or does it not exist or can it be a fantasy pen or is it a oh pen my that's gosh if you could like if you if you so you're saying like engineering like right pen. so like if you're asking me like what is my grail pen and like i can have that i dream of genie when she was young not now but she's probably really old she's probably dead but if i had a bottle with my own genie dressed like a belly dancer who for some reason is blonde and does whatever i tell her all the time forget it, i don't need a grail pen anymore i'm just kidding um <laughs> And I told her to make a pen. I would I would probably go with like. It would probably be like a Pelican M eight hundred or Pelican one thousand, with a slightly darker, vibrant green color to it. Okay. You know, like like I have I think I brought it with me. Yeah, this is the vibrant green. I would probably like go a with darker version of it. Slightly less vibrant. You know what I mean? Just okay. like. A little bit more like the yeah. evergreen hunter yeah. green. Just sort of a, one? Yeah, a little bit darker, just ever so slightly darker, but the size of like the M1000. This is an 800, oh, okay. but like, or maybe the 800, because the 1000 is big. That thing's like a yeah, rocket. Yeah, you and it doesn't I mean? fit in most pen cases either. Like, yeah, you would I mean, probably right. have to get like one that's particularly made for that. Right. I mean, it would be that, or, I mean, I, I you know, I keep talking about this pen. I really like the SD. But like in a green. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really cool. You know what I would do if money were no object? I could actually make and invent a pen. Would be inventing one that had like two different ink 
um, reservoirs. And then you would be able to control. So like, let's say you put two contrasting, or not contrasting, but like maybe like you would put like a blue and like a red um, complementing colors. But like you put the two colors in the in the pen and then you would be able to regulate the flow of like the supplemental color so like normally if you don't put like if there's like a button on the side so like normally if you don't put any pressure on that button it would just write in the one color when you start putting pressure on that button it starts to release the ink from the other channel and then it would start mixing it that's a cool idea so like on your downstroke you could like mix it and it would of course have like some wicked flex nib so like well on your downstroke you would then make, be able to mix it kind of like how the parallel works where you would tip you would touch the tips together and right. you would like be able to then create that gradient blend i think that would be phenomenal then you have to make sure you also create an ink that's compatible with each other mixable, right we well, could go you know? with like let's say the the platinum mix free inks which are which are already uh, mixable with each other so you could go with something like that and that would you would create like your own unique color blend as you write with it and I think that would be like that would be a game changer um, and I'm sure that there's maybe there's a manufacturer that's watching this and is like damn I gotta do that hey I got the DeCity Siri Vizivizi up and working now <laughs> look at that look at nice. this. it's like a dog licking the page <laughs> So we we're, we're looking at your pens before, but what are what, these are the pens that you're in your uh, current rotation, right? No, these are the pens that... Oh, you just brought for a fancy show? <laughs> no, it's uh, pens that have, like, particular meaning. Like, every pen that I got doesn't, like, mean any... Like, they're not grail... Not grail status, but, like, these pens have stories behind them. Mm hmm You know what I mean? And I'll go from the... These are backwards order. Oh, God, he's got to change the order up. Yeah, so, like, I'll go, like, it goes from, like, oldest to newest, and why. Okay. Alrighty? So, like, this pen here is the Paniter La Grande Belletza Dolomite Green. They didn't really get the kink squared away with this one, because it scratches itself and all that stuff, but this pen was $638. It's limited to 774 and it's really a beautiful-looking pen, but the story behind this one is, this pen... And as well as my buddy Marcos constantly nagging me, is the first review I did, and I I had never intended on doing a fountain pen review channel. I never intended on doing YouTube either. But this pen, I love it. But it has so many features about it that needed work. It was worth it to me to buy it because I love how it looks. It's not my favorite writer. The capping of it causes scuffing around the rim of the grip section, so I don't post it for that reason. Mm -hmm. Also, the center band causes a ring around the body of the pen every time you take it on and off because it rubs. The grip section is not my favorite grip section because of uh, the hourglass shape, so I don't get to... It's I don't a little too pronounced. Right, I don't even get to choose where I hold the pen. One of the major things I also had with this pen is I actually replaced the feed with one of the cheapy plastic feeds because the Bach feed that was in here, the cutout for where the nib sits... Mm -hmm. was way lower than how the nib actually sits. So if I had the Bach feed in here, I could push the nib down where the tip of the nib is below the tip of the feed. Oh, that's stuff. Right. So because of that, the nib is always wiggly. So I replaced it with this feed because the cutout seemed to work better. It's a very wet writer, super wet. It's not being really wet right now, of course, because I'm on, on live. And yeah, I'm you gotta love that. Right. Um, but it's the first pen I ever reviewed in... For that reason, I have a lot of sentimental value for it. Yeah, so even if it's, like, not one of the favorite pens that you right, can't get rid of you, it. You can't get rid of it, yeah. It has a little bit of a Franken, Frankenstein-looking head to it because of how the, the acrylic rounds, and then all of a sudden there's, like, this cylindrical Flat, tube coming yeah. out of it. It kind of skews me out. I don't know why. <laughs> but I like it. You know, it's got a quill-shaped clip, and that quill-shaped clip is merely aesthetic. This one's the uh, Opera Master Luna. Luna. It was uh, one of your competitors, Goulet, who was, you know, cool dude. There's a story behind this one. I experienced a personal tragedy, and when I got this pen, uh, Brian sent me a handwritten letter, you know, about it. And that pen is, uh, you know, it was very meaningful. This pen here is, uh, it's not inked up. Vibrant Green. This is the first, first uh, gold spot purchase with Dawn. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is. I called her about this pen, and uh, it was Dawn's personality and her uh, chatting with me 
that, mm -hmm. you know, you know, made me like, oh, you know what, I'll buy the pen. And uh, I got this pen, it was a vibrant green, it's a Pelican M600 vibrant green. It has a squeaky nib. Again, not one of my favorite writers, it's not inked right now, but every time I write with it, it has a squeaky sound to it. Really? Yeah, it's an extra fine, but for an extra fine, it writes like a bra. Oh yeah, that's the that's what I expect out of those pelicans. Yeah, like, like they just have like a very thick flow on the even an extra. <coughs> but I, I I like this pen because uh, every time I think about it, I think about like how nice Dawn is and stuff like that, and how much fun we had talking, or I had. I'm chewing her ear off. It's like seven o'clock at night. She's like, "Yeah, I actually finished work at five. Oh my god, that's great!" But anyway, listen actually, to this. Actually, I have dinner on right now, and like you know, I need to go to bed. <laughs> Uh, this one here, the Conklin um, Word Gauge Stealth. First of all, it's a great pen. I like how it writes. It's only 156 bucks, and it's a carbon fiber pen with a piston filling mechanism. The funny thing about this one is it's it's got a counterclockwise rotation to close. I mean, bring bring the piston back, and right. it's a clockwise rotation to push the piston forwards, which is backwards. Unusual, yeah. Yeah, I really like this, especially how the way these these nibs write. This is not the first one that I had either. And this, the first one I had writes the same as this one. It has like a hint of stubbiness right. to it, but it's a fine. And the downstroke is thicker than the cross stroke, but not enough to call it stub, but right. enough where it gives a flair to your writing. That was uh, that was the same thing I noticed about the Pelicano Ups. Oh yeah? Um, I Because I had to test it out on my, on my, I was just playing around with them. Like, I had to look at the nib, I was like, this nib, it's it's supposed to be uh it was supposed to be a, a medium nib and I'm like wait a second like I'm doing a downstroke I'm like it's thicker than the horse like this is like stubby right. but like I can't call it a stub because it's not like that but like I notice it it's a slight hint it's yeah. like a flavor yeah. and that's again going back to your point about like context to know the difference between such things and I'm like I'm like wow I think people would really like this because of the fact that just naturally even though it's just a it's just a it's a starter pen. It has it has line variation, which you like. That's hard to find, like in your in that price range. Right. So the reason why this one is sentimentally attached, why I'm so sentimentally attached, is because this is actually the first pen, the uh, after we you and I spoke, where I'm like, hey, listen, I'm uh, at the time. What did I have? Like 300 subscribers. Right. You know, and uh, I was like, I'm gonna talk to the marketing guy for Gold Spot Pens. He has no reason to listen to anything I say, and I'm gonna make these demands, and I'll, and. <laughs> And uh, this is the first pen that that uh, you guys hooked me up with. Cool. And I did the review on. So this pen is special to me in terms of that because it's also the the last review I did before I got like a new camera and, uh, yeah. stu and stuff like you that. You upgraded all the equipment. Yeah, and then I went crazy making all kinds of crazy reviews and stuff like that, which I don't do anymore. That's a joke. I do. Uh, <laughs> this one here. Oh, there's a story behind this one. This is the first pen that you guys sent me. Uh, for review purposes, at right. no cost, and that was like a huge deal. I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm stealing and everything like that. But I tried, I tried, like, <laughs> I, I was trying to coax you. It's just like, like, it's okay. Like, we do this, uh, we do this for for certain. And he's like, and you're just like, you're just like, oh no, no, no. I just feel like I'll be taking things from you, and like, when I, I was like, no, relax. I could, we could do <laughs> this. So what ended up happening was I I ran a giveaway for this particular pen. Right. Somebody ended up winning, but. This pen was like, to me, it was like, oh man, it's like, that's the first one that, you know, I got for review free of charge. And I, so what I ended up doing was ended up giving it away. But before I gave it away, I said, hey, just so you know, to the person who I gave it away to, I also have, what's the other one? The, the one that came out after Blue Ocean or Ocean Green Blue or something like that? Do you remember about the Sailor? Yeah, I bought uh, Pro Gear Ocean Blue, I think it was called. It's kind of blue, but greenish. Okay, yeah, see, that is the, yeah. the the Blue Ocean, yeah. Yeah, Blue Ocean. So I said, listen, I also have this one. If you want, I can send you that one instead. And the, the guy who won was like, oh, my God, that's the same color as my bike when I was a kid. I'd rather have that one. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this one stayed in my collection, and uh, this one is very sentimental to me. I like this pen. The Laban Taroko Artist, right? And the reason why this one means a lot to me is because... As I was doing reviews, I, you know, in the beginning, the first couple of, first six months, I'm trying to find something, some, find a format. And then I realized, like, I hold back too much, mm -hmm. right? So You hold back too much. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, I, I really need to just take risks. I need to be myself. And I was thinking, you know what? I don't work for anybody. I can say whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. 
and this platform that's YouTube is such a good palette for that you right. know what I mean and you know I, I, I really don't care about like trollers and I don't care about all these people who have negative things to say they're not trying to kill me right right whatever they say it's not gonna end my life no so I, I just really don't care so this review that I did on the Levanta Rocco artist I kind of just let the reins go is that the right uh, term Unleashed. Pretty much, yeah. I just unleashed, and I and in addition to being honest, I was just being more of myself. Right. You know, so I would go out and I just start making fun of stuff, which I did, without insulting anybody. Right. You know, so there Keep was it that. classy. This pen here is a Bexley. I I can't remember the name of it, but oh, that's the one that you picked up on the the when you came for the first uh, no, 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 that was, that's the Poseidon too. I think this oh, might okay. be the one. But this one I really like. I remember it was a, it was a green Bexley. Right, but this yeah. is not it. Oh, the that's one, not it. The one I picked up was a lot bigger. Oh, okay. This one um, was given to me as a gift uh, by Chris Rapp. Okay. 52. Yes. He has a review channel. I went to, I went uh, to have lunch with him in New Jersey around here. And uh, I was like, oh, I like that one. You know what his reaction was? Mm -hmm. He was like, it's yours. He just handed it to me. You know, so this, and it writes, it writes like a savage. I love how this writes. It's smaller than the Poseidon 2. Posts really well. They're not for sale anymore, too. Yeah. And uh, it's very well made. He's just like, you know what? It's yours. You can have it. And I was like, no, you, you don't have to do that. But he, it was a very kind gesture. Chris Rapp, he's a, you know, he's a friend. Yeah, Chris Rapp, I, 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 we actually, the last time we spoke was at the DC show. He came up, uh, he was, he was talking to me at the, at the table and, uh, I, you know, I, I, he's in New Jersey, so like we have to, we have to do something like this with him too at mm -hmm. some point. Maybe even like a three, a threesome of, of pen geeks and and do like some sort of. That guy knows stuff. Things. He does. Because whenever he, whenever he opens his mouth, it's fact, and then yeah, it, 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 it's hard. Like, now, I'm you, not going to contradict him on no, it. No, no, no. That's going to be like, like that's a man whatever you <laughs> say. That's that. <laughs> yeah, like like with like like I know a lot about pens. That guy is the pen. <laughs> like, yeah. he, like if he says like no no, no you're wrong. Chances are you're wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean. And we're see we're we're talking about he, we could plug his YouTube channel right. Yeah. Chris Chris Rap fifty two. Chris right? Rap fifty two. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he does like... he does a lot of pen uh, reviews on uh, relatively inexpensive pens like uh, the ones he you know, like Moon Man and I've, right. seen, I've seen like uh, Jin House and stuff like that. He does like a, that kind right. of stuff. And I and I like the way he does his reviews. He uh, just focuses on the pen. He doesn't like to focus on himself. I think he should because when I sat down like. Going to going to have lunch with him, I was like, oh, you know, he's very mellow talker and stuff like that. I, you know, it's, I don't know him. You know, he's an older man, and I don't want to talk over him and be disrespectful or anything like that. So I sat down, and my God, this man has energy. Like he's got personality, he's got energy, and he knows how to like entertain someone. Yeah. You know, and it has a lot to do, you know, with um, you know what what he used to do for a living. Like he he knows how to like show someone a good time. I sat there and. That was fascinating. I'm sitting there and I'm like, this dude is totally spot. Like he had so much energy and I'm like, wow. So it's like, I just sat there and had a good time. Well, he's talking to me about pens and I'm like absorbing all this information. He's like an encyclopedia that has a lot of energy. It's really cool. <laughs> um, this pen here, the Monteverdi Ascenza. Ascenza. <coughs> this one's the Sunny Skies. Sentimental value, well, not, you know, not not the most sentimental. Mm -hmm. I just really, really like this pen. I know you always tell me like every time. <laughs> I'm like, like the like, Monte Verde. Ascent. That's why I threw in like the the uh, that name. Well, you put the Mo Verde into Monte Verde because like I just <laughs> I, I just really every time you're like ah oh, the the Ascenza man. If they could do this for Dude, this, this kind is of an, price, you know, eighty dollar pen. What is it? Seventy six dollars, eighty dollars. Some people are still showing. I remember like I bugged out and I'm like, how come you guys are selling for a hundred? It's supposed to be seventy. Yeah, we had like a price error. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but for $76, this pen is, is amazing. It's faceted. Faceted? Faceted? Faceted, yeah. Faceted, yeah. Faceted, yeah. Right, so in order to do this, you can't spin it on a, on a, on a what is it called? Lathe. The lathe. Yeah. It's impossible. They have to actually sit there and, you know. And have each of the sides be, like, machined down to The to amount of work facet. that goes into this for $76, that's insane. I think if, you have to buy this pen. I just... This, you, you're not going to get a faceted pen made of acrylic like this. I mean, and even the facets, they line up, and you know how anal retentive I am about this. Yes, if it's so. off by a little bit, I bug out. <laughs> you know, and I mean, if you over-tighten it, is it going to... No, it's just, it's just lined up. It's nice, it's solid, it's heavy. 
Mm -hmm. It's it's heavy, but it's not like they cheat, right? Right. It's not like they cheat and put brass inside. Something like to like weigh down the resin, like the resin itself. Right. No, it's solid. It's thick too. Like, just because of the facets, like, it's it's a lot of acrylic. Mm -hmm. It's very. It's got a lot of depth. So not much, not much sentimental value, but like it's just it's just a beast. Heavy on on being an awesome pen. So I did a review on this pen, and I love this pen. Which leads into the next pen that has a lot of sentimental value for me, is the Orange Knights Duragraph. All right, with the Omniflex nib, right? Well, it it did have an Omniflex nib, but I couldn't get it to function. So what I did is I, I took um, a Bach feed that a uh, Bach nib because I bought a bunch of Bach nib units right. because I wanted to replace the feeds, and this one is just a fine or an extra fine. I can't. I can't remember. I think it's just a fine, and I replaced it so that it writes better. But this one, believe it or not, after I did the Ascensor review, um, the, the pretty ink lady from Monteverdi, what's her name? Uh, Sarah. Sarah, yeah. I sent her the review, and she's like, oh, that's really nice. I'll forward it to Yair. Yair looked at the review, and, and he liked it so much that he actually called me on the telephone and talked with me. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I appreciate it. And he's like, no, I appreciate the review. And he was asking me questions like, where the hell did you come from? And I'm like, well, you know, you know, I just started doing reviews recently and stuff. And anyway, he wanted to send me a gift. Mm -hmm. He's like, you don't have to review it. This is just a gift to show appreciation. And I'm like, oh, well, you, you know, the fact that you called is the, the thought yeah, alone. The thought, yeah. But anyway, a couple days, a couple, about a week later, I get in the mail a box from Yaffa, and it has this pen. It has a bottle of uh, Malibu Blue. Missed opportunity there. They could have just called it Malibu. Nice. I like it. They didn't do it though. Anyway, and that and a 48 pen case, which is crazy because I was going to buy a 48 pen case. Um, I like orange pens. Mm -hmm. Se very close second to green pens. And that that was, this was just very meaningful for me for that reason. <coughs> kind of meaningful for us too because I think it was like after that Duragraph Nights video that. Uh, you were just like, oh man, your video production is like, oh yeah, yeah that, you were, that, like you you kept that saying blew like, me out of the water. Yeah, like, you were like, dude, like you just you guys just like raise the bar. I was like, well, that's that's like a part of like what we've been doing in the last like, I would say like since the beginning part of this year has been like really like we feed off of each other. I I, I really do appreciate so, that. Like, I, like I like the fact that when I first started, I had three hundred subscribers and you guys were under three thousand. Yeah. It's been less than a year, I think maybe seven months. I started in December, but I started working with you guys, and you know, you guys started helping me out and acquire pens in, I think, March? I think since March. Yeah. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So it's been eight months. You guys are close to 5,000 now. I think we just crossed 5,000. Did you guys cross just 5,000? Yeah. We're at 5,033 subscribers. What? Isn't that crazy? We, we were at 4,999 this morning. Probably during this stream, yeah. Nice. Nice. But that's what I'm saying, though. You guys got to 5,000. I went from 300 and change to 2,170-something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I like that we're helping each other out and growing our, our social media. Um we're I just trying to provide like better like quality content. You know, you know it's funny in the there, beginning I'm like, listen, uh, you know that pen you sent me, pen you sent me, I did the review and I totally said it sucked. <laughs> I feel bad to use a person, but I don't feel bad as a reviewer. Uh -huh. and, and and then Tom was like, Well, I appreciate that you're being honest more than a good plug for a pen that isn't good. Right. You know, so like that established the line and that established line made makes life a lot easier. You know, I don't feel good about saying, listen, don't pull the trigger on this pen, it's crap. But I will say it. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, that's what people appreciate and that's what they value is, is the honesty behind it. So if there's something that isn't right about the pen, you're going to, you, you break it down to like the most like minute type of detail oh, that yeah. no one even would want to consider, but that's where you put it in like the neutral zone. You're like most, so it, it could go either way, but here's just everything about the pen that you could possibly know as in, in terms of like, even how the clip is like faceted, uh, fastened into the, the cap and mm -hmm. like the, the bands and the, the, like every little part of detail. And that's what people appreciate is that they it's want to know, me. yeah, they want to know like all the details about it and, you know, for good or for bad. So it is what it is and that people can make up their own minds about it. Right. So. You know what, it, you know what's funny is because even on pens where I'm like, don't pull the trigger on this pen, it came, you know, it's, it, it was, it's just crap. People will still buy it and find yeah. out for themselves. Yeah. So, you know, they, but they want to know about the details so that when they buy it, you know, going like, listen, if I might say, oh, this aspect about a pen is garbage. Right. 
but they may be able to live with that. Yeah, because like something not, else know. overrides it. So like if it's right. the style, the the acrylic or or like or like the type of I don't know filling mechanism or the or the nib, it just supersedes all other needs of the pen. But then you're like, oh well, there's this there's this like like little hairline little detail that just is completely set off and and for that reason I just don't like it you know like you could they right. could still be like oh well I, I still would like I don't really care about that I still like it and I would get it right. so and you know the thing is like I watched a video um Stephen Brown Dr. Brown SBRE Brown he was talking about objectivity right and he's absolutely right if you're a human being you cannot be completely objective no you can't hence my neutral zone the neutral zone is only saying this is a nib this is a body, this is that, this is that, it's made of this and that. Then the good is what I think is good. Right. The bad is also objective because it's just price. I just right. talk about price and this pen costs this much. If you're gonna buy this pen, know you're spending this and giving away your next of kin or know that you're not gonna go broke or whatever it is, you know, and it could be good You can just skip on a lunch and you'll right. be fine. <laughs> the ugly is what I think is not good about the pen. And right. That's subjective because some people might think, like, listen, that aspect to me is not that big of a deal, okay? I know about it, good. I can move on from that. Or some people might be like, that killed it for me. Yeah. That's a deal breaker, you know? So, and then high noon, you know, I, I understand nowadays into today's society due to the violence and everything like that, like guns and talking guns. Oh, listen, I hate guns myself. What I do love is the Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. So when I started with the neutral zone, the reason why is because you have to talk about something that's neither good or bad right. or ugly. That's where the neutral zone came up. And it's all themed around that movie. And right. High Noon is like a common term used in Western movies yeah. where it's time to do the face off and you draw, you know, yeah, yeah, right, right. each other and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean to say that I like guns or gun violence. I, I don't. The next pens that were in my case are the Estabrook Estes. These really don't have that much sentimental value to me either. Oh, well, it does in that uh, they were given to me by, um, uh, you know, Ryan and Carrie and uh, Brian at Kenro. And they're fully aware of how brutal I am when it comes to reviewing pens. Yeah, so you know? they, they had to kind of swallow hard when they gave those over to you and be I, like, I, don't I, think, I, I know, really hope that you'll like these. <laughs> no, I don't think that they do. Like, like, as nice as they are, like, everybody forgets about the fact that these guys are, they're, they're old school New Yorkers. They're, yeah. they're from Long Island. Like, they're nice because they learned how to be nice in order to be successful at the business. Mm -hmm. But they can also step up when they have to. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Carrie Yeager, he's, a, he's, he's from Long Island. He was born and raised in Long Island. This is a guy who lived in Long Island, grew up in Long Island. There are, they're accidentally finding bodies buried in Long Island. <laughs> From his generation. But let's clarify <laughs> that we're not caused by Carrie Yeager. Right, they're <laughs> most likely, in all likelihood, not caused by Carrie Yeager, I think. Um, that's up to speculation. <laughs> no, but like I'm saying, like, you know, they can handle, they can handle themselves. Like, I don't need to butter up their pen for them to sell it. I don't need to say good things about them. You know, they're one of my sponsors. Right. But if something sucks, they know I'm going to say it. Right. And they can handle it because they're not wimps right you know what i mean their their sensibilities aren't they're, they're pretty sturdy when it comes to that but i just happen to really love these pens yeah and what happened was i was talking with uh carrie and i was like oh the esterbrook i'm you know i'm interested in blah 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 he's like all right well i got two you can i'll send them out to you i'm like i'll just come and get them because i was so excited about getting them and i got them in my hands i'm like these are beast and that was when you did the interview with them? You did the... Well, no, no, that was after. Oh, that was after. That was after. After I got them, I put the review out. I was the first person to do a review on them. Yeah. And uh, I, I fumbled it because I said they were made in China when they're actually made in Taiwan. Right. I said that they were $170, but they're actually $156. Right. With, so, with the, yeah, the discount. Thing. Right. But I love them. They're awesome. These yeah. pens are so... Like, yeah, they're made in Taiwan. But they're, but if you they're told made me extremely they're, well. Right, if you told me that Montegrappa made them, I would believe it. I mean, it shares the same single thread concept. Hey, Chris, you want to talk to Karen and see if she got that air conditioning working? <laughs> I don't think she did. I don't think oh, in this here. particular room it's really not that. Mm, I don't, it I don't really think it's working. It doesn't get, like, very cold in here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, I mean, I really love them. They're, they're just fantastic pens. You can't, for 156 bucks, man, like, this is absolutely fantastic well i remember when when it was first announced and um 
and they, they brought this up that they were taking over Estabrook mm -hmm. and they were going to come up with their own design and, and, and really re-energize the, the brand. Um, I, I was full on like supportive, like from the get go. And I was like, I was like, you guys have a long road to hoe for trying to make it so that people will be convinced that this is a good project, mm -hmm. but I think it'll be worth it. I think you'll knock it out of the park. And I was not disappointed with the SD. Oh no, I'll tell um, you, I, I love the SD. It's, it's, man, I'll tell you what though, people were pissed. I did the review on it and man, did I get comments like, oh, it's not like the vintage ones or, or it doesn't look like an SD. It looks like it's just an acrylic pen that they put yeah, in so, well, Yeah, it's, a, it's another acrylic pen with the Yovo. And it was like, well, does the, the MV section do anything for you? Like that the whole ability to have it compatible with the uh, the vintage Estabrook nibs. I know? didn't actually get the MV converter. And I, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to because, um, I don't know, I just, I like the way the pen is. Maybe I will, I don't know. I don't have I mean, I don't like, have the thing is, like, I have it, I have the other section at home, but I just find this so fun to write with because I, I went and I invested in getting the, 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 the steel flexible nib, which you could, you know, it's like, it just, it just has no a... No way, let me try, let me try, let me try. Let me try. <laughs> If we had, if I could maybe go and grab, well, Chris is, Chris will come back, but, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a steel flex nib and Damn. it has a, this is a good flex nib. Yeah, it does. I mean, that's, that's why it's one of those, uh, that's why it was so highly, you know, recommended by, like I mentioned before, well, pointed desk had a, had a post about all the different uh, vintage Esther. Where'd you nibs. get the nib? I bought on eBay. So like some, some seller in, in China had them, um, you know, it wasn't cheap, but like, uh, they could the the other Estabrook nibs could be had um, relatively inexpensively, and then you could always just swap them out because they're all kind of like how a Pelican nib is, where you could just twist them out and, and just swap them out in that MV section. So you have to get the MV section in order to be able to do that. But um, you know, when you do, then you could change it up and have a completely different writing experience in the same pen. That's pretty cool. That's like that's backwards compatibility. Yeah. That's that's an which is something that bridges that modern to the vintage argument because a lot of people had issues when Estabrook came out uh, with the, uh, uh, the 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 uh, several years ago, and we're just turning out these you know uh, inexpensive Chinese pens that like just had acrylic resins or or you know it, it just had steel nibs on them and were not made well at all. Uh, but, uh, th that was the issue going forward was like, okay, well, we have the Estabrook brand. What do we do with it to really bridge that gap and make it so that people who like the vintage Estabrooks and, and like a quality pen could, that, that, that can, can converge and that people could actually get behind this. And I think that that section did it for me. And I really hope that they come out with another model that doesn't necessarily have to be like the SD, but maybe like something else, but that would also use that section. So that you'd be able to then, uh, we got a bug flying around here. Uh, so that you'd be able it's then because to, it's so humid and hot. Yeah, it's a little. It's get a little. Uh, get a little humid in here, but um, you know what I think also like like they don't like realize that the Estabrook SD isn't a corporate concept. Is it, like it's not like you know the guy at the top says make a pen, pay a bunch of designers, a bunch of designers create with something, it gets approved by a board. No, this is just Terry and Ryan. Yeah, they, they were a pen, and that's how they came out with it, and it's just awesome. I really, you know, these were the guys that were going to be at the front of the firing squad if this did not go well. Oh yeah, because they were going to be. They're at shows like Harry's at the Ohio Pen Show. He's got the full range of Estabrook pens at his table, and he was going to have to go. Him and Ryan, everybody else at Kenro, are going to have to go to every single pen show throughout the United States and stand behind this product. And if and if it came out anything less than awesome then they were going to hear about it from people you know so yeah. it's like so it's like how imagine that kind of pressure it's like i gotta make something that people are gonna like because you know i am going to hear about it every single time i go to a pen show you know that not, this was crap though, it's like the polish is it's absolutely amazing on this pen the polish yeah. is they're they're amazing I all right they're gonna think they're gonna start thinking at home that we're we were paid for this no nope. i'm not um, getting paid for know, this for, i got a monster energy books. drink and there was a blue one. Where's my blue monster energy drink that you got me? It's, it's, in, the, it's in the refrigerator. Oh, okay. So. But what was I going to say about the Esterbrook SD? Yeah, you know, it's just um, the Esterbrook, what it was before. There's a Popeye pen that I want. Esterbrook has this Popeye pen. Oh, right, right. Right? And um, that was part of the old. Yeah, that, that was what yeah. I was going to say. It's not part. The Esterbrook SD is the first Esterbrook pen 
produced under the Kenro. Right. Yeah. The Popeye one, I know it's probably not going to be the greatest pen, but I did like Popeye as a kid. Right. You know, and I really, I'm actually... They also have the Peanuts one, too, the Charles Schultz one. Right, I'm not really too crazy. Hey, did she... Uh, did yeah, it? should be good to go. With could you want to grab the, the, the monster that he got me, the blue monster <laughs> in the fridge, too? Oh, yeah. Right. I'm sorry, Chris. Thanks. Good <laughs> show, man. If oh, Josh were here, I would tell him to do it, because uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's too quiet to even complain. What are you doing over there? Oh, you got a, you got a fan? So that's oh, a, yeah, that's a good idea. I yeah, wish we knew about that before. You could blow uh, you could blow Roy's musk my way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't. Well, you know what it is? Whoa! Oh, God. You know what? I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Can everybody hear the fan going off? Yep. Is Probably, that, that, that going to smell like me all the time? It's not like me all the time. Not over here. Like no, I'm too obnoxious. Oh, God. Back Good. Up. Thanks for repeating that. Yeah. Mark, oh, not, not over, not over you. Uh, right. Fortunately. So. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh no, that's it. And the last pen here, the Pelican M two hundred Olivine. I know what you're going to say for this one already. God, say it for me. This inspired his. Uh, where's my pen? Uh, rendition of uh, Bob Seger's "Turn the Page," because yep. he would text me almost every single day or like even sometimes multiple times a day because it just became a joke at a certain point and he would ask me did the olivine come in yet did the olivine come in yet hey uh, any oh my god it's on carpet no you <laughs> lost the olivine but like thank you but like he would he would constantly pester me for the olivine not that we not that we had them available for sale or anything yet it's just that we i just i told him about it it was coming in and he wanted to know if it came in from pelican yet so he just kept asking over and over again is the olivine i kept asking again? him before it was even announced yeah so like because we knew going into 2019 or 2018 being that olivine was the color of the year the ink of the year that an olivine pen was going to be coming out so it was like a, a matter of like well is it coming out? It will come out sometime soon. It will be sometime soon. Uh, Pelican's always been behind lately on their estimates, so it's uh, it's been it's been a difficult wait. Right. Well, that. you might want to just you know s s crack the whip on them because the next time they come out with something that I want and you're telling me it's going to be in two weeks, yeah. first of all, I'm going to start calling you two weeks before it's supposed to come out yeah. and ask you if it came yet, even though I know it's not for another two weeks. And then, God forbid, the day comes where it's supposed to be here and it's not here. Yeah. That's it, man. You just might have to change your phone number. I might. Um, but you, interesting fact, though, you, you appreciate is that next Friday, Chris and I and and uh, and some other folks from Bull Spots, Karen and Sal, uh, <laughs> you may have heard of them before. I think they, they own the place. Right? They, they own the place. Mm -hmm. The uh, So we're going to be going to Jersey City and doing an on-site interview with Jens Meyer, which is, he's, he's like the me as far as marketing for Pelican globally. Wow. Yeah. Does he speak English? Yes. I'm hoping. If he doesn't, you need a German translator. <laughs> I put together some some good interview questions for him, so I'm hoping to uh, you know talk a lot about Pelican in the next uh, in the next few. Excuse weeks. me. It's Pelican. Pelican. I'll Pelican. ask him. I'll ask him what he says. I'm taking his word. I'll for bet it. you this pen that it's Pelican. You can bet me that pen. It'll still stay here. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so I have other questions here, but we were talking about the pens in rotation. What is the reaction you get when you tell people you review fountain pens on YouTube? Depends on who I ask. Usually it starts a line of back and forth insults to each other. Yeah. Um, for people who aren't, I was going to say a word, but it's not, um, uh, for people who aren't posterior openings, where legs meet. <laughs> and those are the guys I work with. They're like, oh, they say the same thing, but they just cover it in politeness and in manners. They go, oh, really? That's interesting. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Right. Meaning, like, uh, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, 20 minutes later, psych services are showing up on my door. Open up. We need to see that you're mentally stable. And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. This is my setup for videos to make pe um, pens. This is my this collection of pens. This one's $1,000. You're coming with us, sir. <laughs> like, no, 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 I'm really mentally stable. I just do videos on pens. What? <laughs> nobody me... nobody understands the concept of, like, a pen that costs $600. Unless they yeah. hear the name Mont Blanc. Right. Right? But if I'm like, oh, yeah, this pen is uh, $600. You take that to work with you? Yes, I do. Okay. Put this jacket on. Why am I wearing it from the front? Why is it crossing my arms? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
when people when I tell people they they kind of like look at me sideways. Right. You know. No, but it's a, it you know it's it's something that if you don't know pens you're just kind of like, oh okay I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah. Just like just like I didn't know there was such a thing as ASMR up until like a few months ago, and then I started getting down that rabbit hole and seeing like. Oh, people actually make videos like this. Have you ever seen the ones where I'm talking about where like they, they have like the two microphones and they're like whispering things into them and, and like to, to to like stimulate the audio senses? Right, no? no? Okay. Alright, well that's something that people at home at, on YouTube can can you know can look at. A S M R is the uh, I've discovered sport. after doing this channel that there are channels on everything. Oh yeah. Mouse traps? Yeah. I can't watch that because first Mouse of all traps. mice are cute. Or snake bites. Did you know that there's a, a, a channel on, on, on this, this, like, dude who pops zits? It's the most nasty thing ever. All it is is just a dude's like, okay, I'm a doctor, and here's... Blackheads, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he's like, here's this, look at that, look at that. And they use, like, the lance, and oh. they perforate it, oh. and it's just, like, the stuff... Mm. I, I, I have to admit, that's, like, a guilty... Like, I've, I've been guilty of, like, looking around for those videos. Why would you want to eat... Why would you want to watch that? I don't know. It's fascinating. It's, like, it's especially they show it, like, really up close to the macro lens, and you're just, like... It just happened. It was like an explosion of like, you know, all sorts of gross stuff. But mm. I don't know. It's so weird. That is kind of weird. But that's that that's on YouTube. Yeah. So there's that. Yet me doing a pen review is it's, really it's mind boggling, right? right? Yeah, Come on, it's man. So weird. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. But sometimes it's positive. When I show them my stuff, you know, because I put a lot into the production and stuff, they're like, oh wow, that that looks looks professionally done, you know. And I said, you know what? Here's the stuff that I did that I didn't know how to do five months ago. What did you learn in the last five months that you do now that you couldn't do five months ago? Right. They can't answer me. I think a lot of people assume that putting up YouTube videos or, or just publishing stuff on social media or on you know on YouTube is just, you know, it's just like, oh, we could just take a camera and just do it. It's like, well, yeah, if you just did that, it would kind of look like crap and you you know like no one would want to watch it but you know it, it like what we had to invest in like both of us like personally and and business uh, wise we had to invest in a lot of equipment we had to we had to invest in chris over here who's doing a lot so <laughs> spending a lot of time editing uh you know a lot of the ums and ahs and all the the stuff that you don't want to you know be bogged bog down with as, as you're seeing with this live video we're just doing everything you know uh, off the script, but there's a lot of there's a lot of time, a lot of energy is put into it. Oh and yeah, you know, for me the hardest part about it is writing out what I'm going to say. Absolutely, yeah. And I've noticed in the beginning what I would do is I would throw on a camera, and, and just, I would just start talking. And yeah. after an hour and a half, I'm like, but I can't say that. Oh, that's going to offend somebody. Oh no, that's a bad word. Oh, yeah. That's a bad word. Nope, that's also a bad word. You cut it down. You you're I'm like, like, like five I'm minutes. Yeah, I'm like I have only eight minutes. <laughs> and I put it all together, but then there's too many cuts. Right. So, after getting rid of all the inappropriate jokes and profanity, I'm left with like eight minutes of material. So instead of spending so much time recording all this, just face noise, right? I just script it out now, and that's the hardest part, is writing it out. And the, the easy part is shooting it and editing it. That takes me like two hours. Yeah, because then once you have the script for it, you just you just like you're reading from it. You're adding the intonations as far as like your voice and everything. And, right. And you know. The, like you're giving the oomph enthusiasm right so I don't have to say um anymore I know yeah. exactly what I'm going to say and after writing it out I'll read it a few times I used to like hang a piece of paper on and read off of it but now I just memorize it and if I don't have time and I couldn't memorize it I'll put it on like a you know a monitor mm -hmm. and then just read it off and stuff like that but no I have to attribute the fact that I've been doing more YouTube videos I have to attribute the fact <coughs> that I nailed a best man speech a few weeks ago oh, yeah? because of the fact that I've been so used to doing this kind of stuff I was just like I, w I had the I had the whole thing out on cards I rehearsed it a few times I ran through it I did like a, a beta test audience with like my family around I was getting laughs and everything I was like I was like I am ready and I nailed that thing That's I even awesome. used I what I did I'll show you later but like I used uh, your phrase, uh, you know, watching my face make noise. <laughs> I actually used it in in part of the speech uh, because I just I, I just I love that phrase. Like it, first time you, you said that, it, like it like tripped my like my you know, it's funny, sense like, of humor. I, I know that we have to keep things family friendly, family friendly. So I, oh, I haven't my. dropped any bombs. I haven't dropped so, but but 
it's too bad that you don't just like let it loose sometimes because <laughs> you're, you're 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 really funny, but I I know that you hold back a lot. I know you hold back more more than more than you probably. I think could get you. I could get my my wife will like crack up every time that she hears me drop like a really bad curse word because she doesn't <laughs> hear it that often. And then when I do it, I usually do it for comedic timing and everything. Uh -huh. And it's just like even even I whatever I said could be just the dumbest thing ever, but I added the I dropped the F bomb in it and she just cracks <laughs> up. You know what's funny is my wife always tells me, she's like, before we meet people, she's like, do me a favor, don't talk about this, 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 and don't say that word, don't say this. And I'm like so what you just want I me do? to keep my mouth shut the whole time? Is that what you're telling me? You don't want me to you be just myself? Want me to nod my head and just be like, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, but I find a way without <laughs> offending anybody and stuff like that. So my next question is, when will Pen Boy Roy become Pen Man Roy? <laughs> when will that when will that transformation finally take place? I don't know. I think it's just in my nature. Yeah, it's, it's just my just personality. Gonna, it's just gonna remain that way. Yeah, you know what it is. Like I know I'm not a boy. I guess by gender I'm a boy, but I mean, Pen Man Roy doesn't really. No, it doesn't give the same. No, it doesn't you know, really give the same thing there. And um, then what happens if Cain Velasquez is watching this pen review? He's like, "You're not a man." You know what I mean? <laughs> he might just be sitting there, him and Brock Lesnar, like that guy saying he's a man. We're a man. He's not a man. We gotta go beat him up. And I got <laughs> six hundred pound of pounds of human gorilla coming after me now. Man. <laughs> we'll keep it as Pen Boy Roy. It rolls off the tongue. I like it. What is the future of your YouTube channel? What is in the in the cards for the future? I don't know. I don't know because when I first started, I'm like, I'm just going to use my phone. I'm never going to go up and I'm just going to do the one video on the Pineda La Grande Valletta. That's it. That's it. That was the only plan, the only pen I planned on doing. And then I'm like, hey, you know what? Let me try another one. Let me try another one. I'm not going to buy a camera. Ten minutes later, I have a camera. I don't need lights. I can just use my living room. I have a light set up. Um, no special effects. Now I got green screen and stuff going on. It's like I have no idea. I was like, you know, I did a, I did a cinematic review, of like a home invasion, right? Apparently it was intense for some. And I was like, you know, I'm never gonna do anything other than just a review. I got two music videos. <laughs> I, I'm not a singer. I don't know how to sing. I'm looking forward to the album, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's, it better be out by Christmas. I want at least like six or seven good tracks. Plus, at least a Christmas track, like a like something like a Christmas, a traditional Christmas song, sung to the, uh, you know, to the tune of like, with, you know, in, infusing fountain yeah. lyrics and everything. You know, you know what the funny thing is. I, uh, on my Instagram, a couple of weeks ago, my wife was just on her phone, and I started humming, and she started videotaping me. I'm like, are you videotaping me? And she's like, yes. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. And I was making fun of a noodler's pen. Yeah. And um, you know which video I'm talking about, right? No, it's on Instagram now. Yeah, it's on Instagram. But um, basically, somebody made a comment. I missed two FaceTime calls. But uh, somebody made a comment, and they said something about courage. Like, it had to be courageous for you to do this. And I'm like, well, it didn't really take courage. I'm not really afraid of doing stuff. Because, I, I don't know, I just don't have that, like, oh, I'm afraid of standing up in front of people and playing. Because I, listen... You, you you give me enough money, I'll stand up on the stage naked with a saxophone that I don't know how to play all day long. Like, I'm not afraid of that, you know? But, um, I don't someone, know. Should... Someone needs to, like, do a caricature of like, Roy <laughs> naked on a stage with a saxophone. But I, I posted this video. So you know, after doing that, I'm like, you know what? Uh, she recorded that, and I put it on on Instagram, and it was funny. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make a music video because because Tom's making me wait for this olive vine pelican. So I just started doing that, and I didn't know I could do that, but I find out because you you take plunges, you take risks. Right, you know right. what I mean? Sometimes, like if if it's about seeing what would happen if you piss off a grizzly bear, I'm not gonna do it. But if it sees what's going to happen in terms of personal development, go for yeah. it. If you screw up, who cares? It's not going to kill you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Question. Yes. Uh, African Scotian says, Happy Fountain Pen Day. Happy I'm looking Fountain. for a good ink to use with my dip pens, as well as a good paper that does not feather. Any suggestions? Good ink for the dip pens. 
as well as good paper. Well, I mean, I like Rhodia, this is what we use regularly here, ADGSM, you know, it's a dot grid, uh, or Claire Fontaine's good. Um, it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, so like, although like some of them, they vary either 80 or 90 GSM, um, but uh, you know, it's a wonderfully smooth paper, fountain pen friendly. Um, Tomoe River paper is also nice for fountain pens too. It is nice, with, but like, it's super thin. It's super thin, but like you, would, you, you tend to see the best color vibrancy and the, the level of sheen and shading mm -hmm. better on Tomoe River paper than any other paper. Like it just, it's, it's far above and beyond. But it's off-white. It doesn't change the color of the ink. Like if you're using a green ink on an off-white paper. No, it's not. There's, there's, no, it's a, there's ones that are white. Really? Yeah, there's, there's paper that's white. That's, that's out there. Hmm. There's, there is cream as well, but there's, uh, there's white uh, papers uh, available there too. Hmm. Um, kind of like this white. It's like it's a pretty, it's pretty white. I mean, if I put them next, it's, it's the thing is, though, it also takes the complexion of whatever's behind it because it's so thin too. So you have to yeah. kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, but as far as like inks are concerned, I mean, I, I love Robert Oster inks. There's tons of different colors, and a lot of them do have that property, uh, those additional properties of like, uh, you know, slight bits of sh uh, shading and sheen, and there's everything else that's, uh, and they're very safe and they're very easy to use with fountain pens or with dip pens because they just rinse right out and there's no uh, intense staining as with other, you know, uh, chemical properties that would make uh, inks kind of, you know, have a fragrance about them as well. Um, there's not anything like that with a rubber doster ink that I find, uh, but uh, but yeah. So I, what is I, he using the dip pen for? Yeah, just probably drawing or writing. Let's see. Because he said, "What's a good ink?" But what's a good ink like in general for black, blue, green? Kind of to circle back what we were talking about with musicality. Chris actually, he's part of a band. You're part of a band? Yes, I am. He's a guitarist. <laughs> so. <laughs> What I suggest, because he was doing a whole bunch of intern videos, and we were doing a whole th different topics of intern videos. We published some of them already on the channel, and I was like, I was like, dude, you have full license. You you one day want to do a music video with you playing the guitar and doing like a fountain pen type song. You are like, I will I will sit there and film it for you. Like, I will help you like do this, and like we'll do we'll get that video up on YouTube. One day. One day though, because he, he think my stuff sucked. <laughs> I have not seen it, so he hasn't seen it. I can't, yet, I can't I, lay judgment upon it. I was I I was definitely because like you did the you did the the turn the page or where's my pen you did that with like a, a rock band or like or like the the digital stuff on um, like a, well get, the where's my pen is is the turn the page, you know spin off like. Reimagination, right? That I use GarageBand. GarageBand, that's what it is. Like on on the on like a, a iOS or right. something like and that. And Sad World is a reimagination of Mad World, and my wife just played the piano. And I thought that was absolutely beautiful. Like really? I love to like, hear the piano play in the background, and that's what that's what kind of like. I mean, I like the I like the the Where's My Pen. I really love like it's it's cute. Like even got my my wife who does not get the whole fountain pen thing. She she was even like cracking up with like the PayPal uh, you know, things and everything. <laughs> yeah. So she was cracking up at certain parts with like the lyrics and stuff like that. But like but like the but like just the the musicality and and the kind of somberness of that of the the sad word mm -hmm. and uh, and like the lyrics too. I was just like Jeez. this is this is awesome. What on the planet Earth is that? I thing? think it's a stink bug. Isn't it? What's a stink bug? It's one of those ones that they just they just kind of like. <laughs> It's kind of he's just tuning in he's yeah he's tuning in he's that is one creepy looking bug he likes the lights i'm i'm wondering where he went he's right he's right there okay if i scoop back really hard will i crush it no it's, he's right next to the uh, evo case that's right there oh i see but they tend to just kind of stick to themselves they don't like bite or sting or anything let's pour some robert oster <laughs> <laughs> Orange rumble on it. Let's throw it on there. I hate bugs that crackle when they bump into you, right? <laughs> like, what's the purpose of that? It's because you left the door open. Good job, no, right? we need the door open right. for ventilation. <laughs> There's no other ventilation. What's all these ventilation shafts? Watch. Here for no, no, leave him alone. Leave him alone. He's no, no, no. I was, oh. Now he's pissed yeah, off. Now he's no, going to attack I gonna, us. I was just going <laughs> to. I was going to keep him under the cup here. Maybe the land. This is all live. You get that, right? Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. like, ah. Did you kill it? No. Nope. No. Might as well. There you go. Now he's awesome. injured. 
No, he's not injured. I didn't touch him. I think he's good. He's good. All right, let's All right, just leave him there for there. Leave him there. He's, yeah. he's good. Leave him like there for now, and then we'll right. take, take him outside later so Peter doesn't <laughs> shut us down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, situation under control. All right, so. Looks pretty dead to me. No, he's, he's okay. They just tend to look like they're. Chris, give him mouth to mouth. <laughs> Roaches are disgusting. Yes, absolutely. I, I love animals and I love creatures and I think they all have a purpose. Roaches, roaches are just disgusting. They disgust. I feel the same way about sprickets. Have you ever heard of sprickets or cave crickets? No. They kind of look like a cricket and a spider had a baby. Oh Seriously. yeah, they're huge. They're nightmarishly huge. Yeah, they could get really big. Like you could see one on the wall and it would be like that big with like all its legs, like all. And they so so what happens is they're also notoriously difficult to even like catch, let alone kill. And like they will, they kind of sense it's coming and they just jump right out of the way. Like that split second before, you know, let's say a newspaper or fly swatter makes contact, they just pew, and they just See, like. But that's the thing, you find them in caves, right? So right. you went into the cave and you found them. So no, no, they you. come into my house. How do they get into your house? They like cross, they like cross spaces. So they oh. come up through like the cross space and they get, they like moisture. So they go up and they, they're usually like in the bathroom or the kitchen or something like that and they freak. <laughs> me out like to did i say way. have at it you kill them as long as you see every time you see them you kill the hell out of them because they're coming into your house i i try to capture as much as i possibly can and let out like like typically anything that's like here with like the you know he's not something like he's that guy around. he's good yeah something like it's that guy people. i will i will catch and release but like when it comes to those sprickets man this they just they don't want to be caught they're the bad boys of the insect world you know what's good for against those bugs tennis rackets you can swing those things fast because there's not a lot of drag with the air, and then it's going to hit, even for like a small bug. Right. The chance of you whacking it is higher than none. It's higher than you think. But roaches, they're just disgusting. They yeah. run too fast for how big they are. You know they run three miles an hour? They do. Yeah, they run, cockroaches, they run three miles an hour. Wow. You know how fast that is in, in, in relation? In terms? Yeah. Like if it was a person running at the same ratio of speed, that's like 200 miles an hour. That's crazy. But they're so small, they just run around. They disgust me. They do. They're like ballpoint pens to me. So what is one little known fact about Roy that your subscribers would find amazingly interesting? You can feel free to share anything that you would like. Yeah, I don't know. One little fun fact about me that... I think I'm pretty transparent. Everything that anyone should know about me they do and if they don't they probably shouldn't know it <laughs> i really don't think that there's anything like my favorite color is green but i wow. don't wear green no they don't they they oh that you don't wear green okay. yeah i don't wear green. <coughs> okay gotcha um i'm a big fountain pen enthusiast i i'm pretty bland i'm pretty transparent there's i don't no like ballpoint pens <laughs> i don't like ballpoint pens as a matter of fact i'll dismantle one every time i see it Right, like if we had one here, I would have taken it apart and made it unusable at some point during the day. Yeah, I just, I'm pretty <laughs> transparent. Everything that I, the people should know about me, they do, and if they don't know, then they shouldn't know it. That's all there is. I gotcha. Uh, so what is an unpopular opinion about pens? I could leave it at that. What is one unpopular opinion about pens that you believe in? I don't know. Give me an example. Of... Uh, well, I mean, I think I think what would fall in this realm is your whole your your kind of your your opinion of noodlers in general. I mean, like most people think that they smell, but like also, a lot of people enjoy them, like writing with them or tinkering with them. But well, most some people, people just don't have. I like me, I don't have the patience to do something right. like that. So, like your statement is is flawed, just by virtue of what you said. Most people think they smell. No, no, no. They don't think they smell. They know they smell. Right. They absolutely do smell. Well, most people will agree that they smell bad right is the question. well it depends do you yeah. like the smell of uh stinky toe cheese when you write <laughs> well some people have gotten nose open. blind to like everything like oh, it's right. just you know you could you could have a rotting fish in front of them it's just like oh really it was there you know but um, uh, okay here's an unpopular thought that i agree with or don't agree with that you that you an unpopular opinion that you agree with yes oh i don't know give me unpopular opinions and i'll tell you if i agree with them or not well, I'll, I'll maybe go with mine personally. Is that I will not, I will not buy Twisby pens because of the fact that they have those those 
there's little hang-ups and issues about them but then again maybe a lot of people might be in the chat and be like oh, i have like 15 twisby pens and like you know like only i have one issues with one of them or whatever but mm -hmm. like i just i i don't i don't particularly believe in products that like have like a you know a natural tendency to have issues with them like mm. really like really critical issues so that would be like my unpopular opinion because like i know that a lot of people like them so okay here's another popular one um uh, mont blanc pens are not worth the cost i kind of agree with that that would that would be something i would feel the same way about as well yeah i mean yeah. just because not not saying that if you have one like you wasted your money but for me a mont blanc is not worth it because when I buy a pen, it goes, like, the purchase is about the pen, the material, the craftsmanship, the look, everything like that. With the Mont Blanc pen, you're, you know, just like a standard 146, it's an injection molded pen. Right. With a gold nib. You know what else is an injection molded pen with a gold nib? That costs significantly less, a sailor. A sailor right. Or a pilot. Right. Or a, a platinum. Right, but people pay for that snowflake, right. so. It's the snowflake that yeah. people pay, pay for. And to me, the snowflake isn't worth it, unless, you know, you're going to some event where you need to have that look, right? You know, and then I've, I've even, heard even so though, like the style, like even the 1911s for mm -hmm. Sailor looks very much like a Meister Schuck, like right. as far as the style is concerned. It just doesn't have the little. That's the, that's the thing is that it's that prestige in people knowing like that it's an expensive item. Right. I, that that's exactly it. You know, and like I said, it's not like if you have one, oh, you're a sucker. No, no, no. As long as you know that you're paying for that and right. you're happy with that, then all the power to you. But for me, I would rather have something that, like if I'm paying the same amount of money, I'd rather have a Pelican M800 over a, a Mont Blanc Meisterstück right. 146, you know, 100%, 100% of the times. I have a Meisterstück 146 and I did a review on it. And you know, a lot of times people come back at me with the, oh, well, I bought one used and blah, 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 blah. Okay. but. There has to be a standardization of buying experience and receiving it. When it comes to buying something used, right? there's no standard. So I have to get it new so I can review it so that the person who does watch the review or needs to get a review knows what happens when you buy it new. Right, if I, a certain if consistency. I, right, if I buy a used pen, then the review is based on the buying experience of the used pen, and they may buy from someone who has, gives them a totally different experience. They may buy from somebody, you know, who gives them a horrible experience. They may buy some, from somebody who gives them a great experience. There's no standardization. There's no consistency with use, so I have to do a new one. Yeah, and also, too, is that the, 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 the pen itself has been used by somebody who could have had a heavy hand or could have not used a fountain pen before and the nib on it could have been wrecked and right. or, or it could have been just like the, the cosmetic look of it could have been like looked like it gone through a war you know so it just it could it could vary quite differently right. so you could buy a used one for 250 bucks whereas a new one is 205 dollars if you're getting the uh yellow gold or or as they call oh don't don't say rose gold because they'll stop you dead in your sand excuse me we call it red gold and i'm like oh, uh-huh okay so the rose gold one you have over there is also 705 dollars no we call it the red gold okay the rose gold one how much is that one <laughs> <laughs> they'll stop you dead in your sight but you know those are 705 dollars the platinum is 755 dollars that's a lot of money that is yeah so i would rather put that towards a piston filling fountain pen Say like the, yeah, or like the or like the Stone Garden too. Right, so. that one also is you know that's also a piston filler. It's made of hand turned acrylic. It's made of European acrylic, which is different from European grade. European grade says to me it's not, it's not made European. in Europe. That's it. You know, if you tell me European grade, you're telling me it's acrylic that resembles European acrylic. So, for me, I think the Pelican M800 is a better buy. I think a lot of people would agree there too. Yeah, it's a solid pen. It's solid. And here's something else that's pretty cool. That I don't know if you knew this. The piston mechanism. It's uh, brass, right? Right. Not just that it's brass, but you can use a Twisby wrench and undo it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's the same same piston wrench. You could just unscrew it. I know because I've done it. <laughs> I know because I think we're gonna. Have, I think I'm gonna have to pick this pen up. This is really nice. No, I don't want you to to drop uh, that much money this weekend. So, <laughs> but it's, it's, what is yeah. this one? What did how much? Yeah, it's six fifty, I believe. Yeah, it's up there. 
but you know, less than a month long in pink yeah, or rose. Less than a month long. Whatever they're talking I'll tell you about what there. though, that doesn't that doesn't spare it from. Uh, You're looking at the inside of the cap portion there. Yeah, yeah. But you know what's funny is the uh, the grip section is injection mold. Yeah, I think they usually do that for the. Yeah. But the acrylic is so gorgeous that you know, you're getting more with this pen than you are in a month long. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, when you pull it out to sign something, no one's going to be like, oh, wow, that's a Pelican M800 Stone yeah. Dart. No. If you pull out a Mont Blanc, they're going to be like, oh, look, a Mont Blanc. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> but, but some, you know, oh, okay. there, there are some people that think Cross is the best there is. You know what I'm saying? So, to me, it's not about the name. It's about the quality. Just like this guy, the, the Dizer, Dizer, Riza, 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 whatever they Dizer call this. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, this is a fantastic pen. If, when this comes out, I'm definitely going to get one. And I'll appreciate it for what it is. But it doesn't need, I don't, I don't need to go around and say, hey, just desert, desert, <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it depends on, you know, I think it's more about the pen. What about you? What about, what? Unpopular do you, thing do you? Well, I, I shared a couple of them already, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not too terribly a big of a fan of, of Twisby, although I know that a lot of people are. Um, also, Mont Blanc as well. Like it, it, like in in terms of like looking at expensive pens, I would want to have in one day in my collection. Uh, you know, like I don't even really consider or regard like Mont Blanc as like one of the ones that I would even look at because of the fact that. I like a level of artistry within each pen as far as like colors and acrylics and materials used and mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of like celluloid so if I were to go with like getting a ridiculously expensive pen I would pick a pen that's done with like the you know the Turchese celluloid that Delta used to use and mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, that, that would be like kind of you know the pen for me but um, in terms of like what Mont Blanc offers, really nothing. nothing yeah, I don't here. really thirst for a Mont Blanc. Like I, I have a thirst for like other Pelicans. I have a thirst for you know, like Italian brands. Like I love the Aurora pen, the Aurora Optimas, like the the acrylic they use in those. Yeah, I love absolutely. Those. And the Italians make some of the best, like finest acrylics in the world too. Oh, so. the the Conklin Nozak. Right, right. That, that's one of the most insanely. That, that's first of all that's Italian port acrylic Italian made in port acrylic mm -hmm. acrylic and it's on a faceted pen with a piston filler now the piston filler might just be a, con a converter, converter trapped inside yeah. you know what I mean okay whatever but that acrylic for what that pen costs that's like 150 bucks that's absolutely insane that thing is made in Italy with Italian port acrylic in Italy not European grade acrylic but Italian it's made in Italy yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can tell, you stamp the way, it on there and say made in Italy. Right, and when you look at it, you can tell this is not, this acrylic is beyond like an Edison pen or, or, or anything else. It's it's Italian acrylic. It's really nice. I, I'm, I'm really <coughs> impressed with the look of the, especially the Toledo Red. Yeah. You know, I don't I'm, know why I'm they call it Toledo Red. I'm preferential to the Ohio Blue, but yeah, it's just the difference. Um, how do we infect more people with the fountain pen virus? Doing videos like this? <laughs> That's a step in the right direction, right? But uh, but how how else do you? Because I mean, we talked about you had you had gotten some some fellow coworkers, got some friends into it. But how do we like really reach like the general masses? See, that's what I try to do. I'm hoping somebody's gonna just look for like a cover of a song, right? And then I put in my tag, like, Mad World Cover. It's not a Mad World Cover, but they're going to look at it and they're going to laugh at it. And right. Then, you know, maybe the fountain pen concept sticks in their head. They, they might even comment, hey, what idiot, what the hell are you doing? You just ruined a song. Go jump off a bridge. <laughs> that's fine. But, I think that is actually a comment that's on there right now. <laughs> but if that stays with them, they're like fountain pens. Just the idea of a fountain pen being in their head could, in a year, a week, make them think, you know what, maybe I'll get a fountain pen. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they also see too, like when they when you write out the lyrics, they see the pen in there, and they see the the beautiful like handwriting and the color and stuff. They're like, wait, that's that's what a fountain? That's a fountain pen? That's or what not that just could that? Do. Like, like, what if they just remember that and it pissed them off so much and they want me dead so much, <laughs> but the fountain pen idea is in their head, and one day they're like, oh, I gotta get a gift for my boss. Oh, what was that? What was that arcade I thing that, I saw in that video? That, what's that stupid thing that that <laughs> stupid idiot did? You know, what, why didn't he get run over by a bus yet? Oh, fountain pen. Boom. 
He's going to go guy, buy a fountain pen. He's going to shop for one. He's going to find one for 100 bucks. And he's going to say, 100 bucks. <laughs> but I got to kiss some boss butt. So here we go. Let's <laughs> buy this. Then he gets it. His boss really likes it. He's like, oh, man, you did a good job. I'm not going to fire you. I was going to fire you because you're dillweed. But you're not getting fired. Then he's going to think, oh, wow, maybe I should get a fountain pen so that way I can kiss more of boss butt. He gets one himself. Then he likes it. Defected. Times two. <laughs> Mission accomplished. And it just spirals it's out. It just from spirals there. out. You yeah. know, and it's like it's just an infection, and everybody's getting infected. You know, so so I do things that uh, kind of like even with the uh, cinematic movie review, uh, movie type review I did on a on a pen. I don't know how to make movies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an actor. I don't know how to film stuff. But I just gave it a shot, and I found out. Oh well, not too bad. You know, but somebody might come across that. You know, some some weirdo who likes home invasions and tying dudes to chairs and asking them questions. You never know. They might watch that and be like, oh, wow, that's a good short film. Yeah, because, like, looking at other YouTube videos that are out there in terms of, like, what's in the pen industry, really you have, like, a standard pen review and you have standard, like, ink reviews, too. Um, you have, like, a what's in my, or what's my carry, or things like that. And only, I feel like only people within who are already infected understand that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, there needs to be, like, additional, like, kind of hooks for, <coughs> for us, for people to find their way in. Right. And I think that's what you're saying, is that the, is, like, so, a, a piece of, a piece of video that doesn't necessarily focus so much on the actual pen or writing experience, or, like, the inks or whatever, but, like, kind of ties fountain pens in in a way that kind of sneaks into the subliminal right so like, that's what i'm saying like somebody might be into music and, and listen to the music video i've made but at least at least it's a connection right <laughs> they might not like the connection but guess what they got it in i got it in their head you got you got some you got that in you got that door to slightly open and you just got it right in there right you know and, and i'll tell you what like people you i know after like a year and after a year or after like six months Eventually, some, like, I have a handful of guys that I know and are like, hey, you know what, I want to give it a try. Which pen do you suggest? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Metropolitan, go for that one. You'll like that one. You know what I mean? I just, just, then they go out and buy it, and then they text me back and ask questions and stuff like that. You yeah. Know? Then uh, I'm like, hey, listen, you should check out, you know, so-and-so's video on YouTube. They'll give you all the information you need. And then they go and do it, and guess what? <laughs> Real them all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's and it's like you're improving their life, because... People are stuck in, in trapped inside of these things. And I love technology. I couldn't do what I do without technology. Right, right. But I mean, there's, uh, there's still a lot to be said about what people can do with, with pens and like what you can accomplish with your mind and a piece of paper and a pen, you know? And, the, and the level of enjoyment and serenity and, and peacefulness that you can get out of just writing with something. That too is, a, is something that's missed with exactly. the digital crap. Exactly. So, uh, what piece would, of advice would you give <coughs> to someone starting uh, a pen or writing YouTube channel. Okay, so for what would I advise for someone who's starting a YouTube channel or wants to? First of all, for the people who haven't started it yet, if you didn't and you want to, just do it. Just do it. Just like, do what, it. what are you gonna? What are you? What are you afraid of? No one's coming knocking on your door, kicking your door down with shotguns and, and uh, yelling at you for it. You can do whatever you want, say whatever you want. You can, you know, if somebody wants to comment and say mean things to you, guess what? Word, words are words. They, they, they're not bullets, you know. They just, just wasted their time in writing a stupid, useless comment. Right, who cares, that you know? As a matter of fact, it should have been written down on paper rather than, like, <laughs> shared on... You know what I mean? And it's like, media. listen, if somebody needs to say something mean, you know, that's... Uh, listen, you provided them an ability to, uh, you know, to, to flush out whatever meanness that they have. Maybe because of that, they're not going to beat their wife. Maybe because of that, they're not going to get into road rage and run over a small family. You never know. They right, just needed that outlet. Right, maybe they need they use you as an outlet. Like, there's nothing to cope with. Like, if somebody says, oh, you're you're bad, you suck, this, that, and this, that, and the other thing, who cares? That's their problem. Yeah, right. Like, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. There's 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 nothing to be afraid of, you know? No one's knocking your door down with baseball bats with spikes in it and beating you over the head because you said a wrong thing or you said a funny thing or a mean thing on a YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Like, sensibilities are... You know, just grow a pair. Just do it. <laughs> just grow a pair. Right. And then also, if you're going to do it, just just dive in and, and do whatever the hell you want. That bug is missing. No, it's on top of the cup. Now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. It's, it's there. Wow, that is a creepy looking bug. That's a stink bug. What? Do they stink or something? It's if you kill, I think if you kill them, 
that's that they or or if they feel danger they could emit some sort of like odor although well, i've never experienced it myself but that's what they call they call them stink bugs i don't know but um I would, like particular advi piece of advice that i would give um not only besides like kind of getting over some fears and anxieties about it because that's a big thing um when it comes to posting anything on the internet is that there's there's that you know there's trolls out there there are people who um they just want to cut you down you know so so one of the things besides like just kind of like that that whole getting over the anxiety is that i would look to to do something like unique you know like i would say that's probably the biggest thing that a lot of people miss is that they say to themselves like okay well i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a youtube review and like then they make it exactly the same like everybody else but like what i think is is probably more useful and constructive is like do something that's uniquely you like like how like roy is just capable of just like letting his personality come through on these things that's what it's all about it's just letting through your own you know not necessarily giving like all of your opinions about something because i don't think that people like watching that's what we're saying about objectivity versus subjectivity right, they still right. want to they want to hear all of the uh the the objective parts but they also want to hear your opinion they want to they want to see your personality on it so like really let that um be a centerpiece of what it is that you're creating it's like I agree with that very yeah, much. Yeah, it's, it's I, making know, that. And I wouldn't say, like, I think it's just important to be yourself. And if you ever say to yourself, oh, I don't think I can do that, shut your mouth and do it. Right. That's what I do. If I think, oh, I can't do that. Now, listen, I'm not talking about I can't jump off the Empire State Building and survive when I hit the ground. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things that you didn't think you could do. And you have a concept in your head. You have a picture in your head of what you want to have happen. You're thinking, nah, I don't, I don't have the resources, funds, or I don't have the ability. You just start making up excuses. Right, just shut up. Just shut up and do it. Just, do, just try. If you fail, and you only get halfway, that's halfway more than you were before. Just right. do it. Grow a pair and do it. You know. And if everybody says mean things about you, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like really, who cares? They're not going to kill you. You know. That's right. the way I see it. Absolutely. And uh, and, and you know, like, uh, just thinking about in general like creative pursuits like even like if you're looking to like write a book or or like start a podcast even like or, or do right. a blog um there there are people out there to snipe anybody who's like who puts out something and uh you know and and not everybody's going to be positive but you have to kind of take the positive with the negative and as long as there's that more of that you know that like that you're that you see that you helped at least one person or that you entertained at least one person that day then you've accomplished something you know even if you didn't make any ad dollars you didn't get any like big sponsorships or you didn't get any like free uh you know complimentary products oh that's another thing too just like a faux pas for anybody starting a, a, a youtube video is faux, do, pas. faux pas is just like it's just it's just like a a general like like in, uh, like a, a violation of courtesy let's say if that makes any sense just like, just like, uh, it would be a faux pas to wear like black and blue. Like I was thinking of getting my black hat today. And You're not supposed to wear black and blue. No, I mean it's like I have a dark blue shirt, and I have another hat like this, but it's in black. And if I did that, that would be like a fashion like faux pas because really? you typically are not supposed to be like putting like black and, and dark blue together. I didn't know that. I don't. That's, that's, I just know some things like that. It just would kind of be weird. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Probably people would disagree with you. Whatever. But I'm just saying, like, one of the faux pas I know of is uh, don't, like, if you're just starting a YouTube channel, like, you've got, like, four subscribers, don't go petitioning to all the different, like, manufacturers, retailers and stuff for free product. That's just, it's, it's like, dude, build something, a little bit something, show, like, you have what you have no videos or you have like one video just build it up a little bit first like show that what it is that you know people are doing like or that or what it is that you're all about like there's no point to like asking for free stuff if you just like started with like one post i, I don't even ask for free stuff no you don't, don't and that's I don't why like i was like i was just like i was I was like essentially yelling at you. Like, Take this damn sailor pen, <laughs> and uh, like trust me. Like there's there's people who have approached us for who have like a lot less to show for what work that they do, and like and like ask for free stuff all the time. So I feel just, like I feel like everything has to be earned. You know, what yeah, I, mean? I think absolutely. everything needs to be. I think I need to earn everything that I have. And secondly, if I don't buy something, then how am I truly experiencing? the buying process how can i really review the buying process how can i really this pen is worth it 
I got it for free, but it's worth it. Yeah, right. Of course, it's, like, it's worth it. Yeah, you didn't pay for it. But if you pay for it and it's yours, then, then, then it's something different. You have no uh, you have no skin in the game, as they say, if, you, if it's completely, like, free all the time. Right. So, right. you know, I, I feel like I have to, you know, so I have to, I have to work things out in terms of sponsorship so that way I'm not broke at the end of the day. Right. But every penny counts. So every penny that goes into a pen counts. And secondly, I don't, I don't like taking food off of other people's plates. You know what I mean? There's the, that that really that really irks me. I don't I don't like to ask for stuff. That's why I never on none of my videos have I ever said please like and subscribe. You know the reason why I like saying that. I know, but the reason why is because I think that the viewers, especially in the fountain pen community, are autonomous, intelligent people. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that have stupid things to say in the comments, <laughs> they're saying stuff. Believe it or not, a lot of times people say stuff and then. You know, it can be construed as negative, but it's actually criticism, and right. criticism actually improves things. So if somebody has something to say that, that doesn't involve me jumping off a bridge, I listen to it, and I'm like, hmm, that's a good maybe point. he's right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. like, it's easy, it's, it's, at first it could be difficult, but it's easy to take a look at yourself when you get used to it and be like, you know what, he, you some do, people, Yeah, you might have a point there in, like, all of the exclamation marks and, you know. Yeah, right, uh, exactly. This, uh, emojis that 100%. they put in there, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. You were talking about, uh, I forget what you were talking about. I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Does anybody remember what I was talking about? <laughs> did we have any questions or anything like that, Chris? That, uh, um, do we have any viewers? Or did my we, no, we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no recent questions. No what, recent questions? All right. What the hell was I talking about before I lost track? We were talking about um, the, uh, the uh, comments about... Don't buy stuff. Don't criticism. Stuff. Criticism. criticism. You're talking about criticism. Yeah, criticism. Uh, you know, that improves things. And uh, oh yeah, that's why I never ask for subscribers or likes or anything like that because they're autonomous. They're intelligent. They know what they're supposed to do and what what not doing it means and what doing it means. I don't need to ask for it. You know what I mean? It's like reminding that do I, at the end. Your teeth. Do I say, wash your hands after you wipe your butt? Do I say wash your hands after you flush? No, none of those things. They know what they're supposed to do, and if they don't know it. They'll find out one day, and they'll come back to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't feel like I'm, I ever need to say that. I'm not running a business. They can, if they don't subscribe, they're not going to subscribe. I'm not losing anything. You know what I mean? I got you. If they do it, they do it. If I ran a business and I'm selling stuff, well, that's a different story. You know, it's all part of the 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 machine that is the business. I'm not running a business. I'm not selling anything. If they don't want to watch, they don't have to watch. If they do want to watch, they can watch. If they want to subscribe, they'll subscribe. I don't need to remind them. Right. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that pinch feeling, you're feeling your groin, that means you need to pee. Go to the bathroom. Don't need to remind them, you know? Oh, you haven't had kids yet. So right. I have not had kids yet. Yes. So you, you so you, like if so anybody, <laughs> anybody out there knowing that, that like, that like, yeah, that you, would you feel like the little pinch that you'd like to be reminded that you have to go to the bathroom? That's kids for you. That's, they have to be reminded to do everything. <laughs> go to the bathroom before your pants are sticky and moist. Yes. But. You know, like I said, maybe I should modify it. If you're under 10 years old, do not watch this video, but, and do not well, subscribe. I, I really hope that n under 10 years old, they're not watching your, your YouTube videos anymore. Right, right. I hope they're watching, like, YouTube uh, for kids, and they're watching, like, you know, Thomas and Tank Engine. I think my videos are pretty family-friendly, and I think any inappropriate jokes are over their head enough that it won't, like, I don't know. You know what, if, if you got kids under 10... D it's just better off just doing YouTube. You just do YouTube kids, or oh, maybe, oh. or just go outside and kick a ball. Right. Yeah. And Joan and and Joy, if you're watching, stop watching it. <laughs> All right. Just go. My, my nieces go to are sleep. there. <laughs> and then, and then I see them comment. Oh, hey, Uncle Roy, we're watching your videos, and I'm like, no, don't watch that one. I say butthole way too many times in that one. You know what I mean? It's like, no, don't, don't. Hey, you know, my brother-in-law lets him watch it, so it's it's his call. Not it is. is. Well, I mean, it's good at least getting them involved. I, I let my kids watch my videos, but it's kind of like pulling teeth because they want to watch, like, um, what's it, uh, uh, FGTV. They want to watch that. The, with, I don't, you don't you don't know about this because you don't have kids, but, like, this, the, they like watching stuff with, like, their slime challenges and gummy worm challenges and, uh, and, and stuff with Minecraft. They watch people play Minecraft, and it's, like, it was, oh, Daddy just made a video. Uh, you want to watch it? Um, okay. They're just like, uh, I guess. Oh, they're you so know. sensitive. You know, 
my wife, I'll be like, hey, honey, I just made a new video. You want to watch it? <laughs> no. <laughs> love you, too. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 I love you. I just don't want to watch it. What's up? Got a couple questions. So oh, from C. Kahua, who we mentioned before, uh, where is the next market or market of interest for fountain pens? Do you think kids' pens or 3D printing or personalization, customs, or a geeked out engineering a la Conid? Okay. Like where's that where's that the, gonna be the next like big trend, you know, I guess, yeah. Thing about pens. Hmm. Good question. That is that is a good one. That's that's one that I tend to like try to think about. I actually asked uh asked the Kaweco CEO, I was like I was like, What do you think that you know, this is all going and wouldn't we all like to know? Yeah, like it's you know, it, it's tough. It's tough to understand that because you see that digital is is, is always kind of like that um, that opposing force to this all. And the more that people are capable of doing like digitally and online, the, the more, you know, this that they attempt to marginalize and push out uh, analog uh, writing or, or creativity that's done using analog methods, whether it is by fountain pen or, or paintbrushes and things like that. You know, that's a, that's a tough, you know, like there's only so much room when it comes to innovation for fountain pens. Right. There's only so much room because it's a, it's a concept that, yeah, it's archaic, but it still works. And there is an artistry to it that still exists. And there's a functionality about it that's enjoyable that still exists. And people are starting to pick up on it now. Where is it going now? That's a good question. Well, I think what he mentioned, too, is that he said about kids uh, kids with pens. And that brings me to thinking about like a story that my dad was telling me. Is that when, when I started working here and um, had started to get into fountain pens and everything, uh, and this was like talking 12 years ago, uh, that, uh, you know, he had mentioned to me when, like, he had asked me for a pen, because, like, of course, now I'm his dealer for, like, all, all things related to fountain pens, and he had asked me for a Pelican, mm -hmm. and, and he had mentioned that one of the first pens that he got when he was a kid, like, w when he was using in school, was a Pelican, mm -hmm. so he, he had that connection because of that, of that experience in his youth, but that's not existent at this point today because kids are getting iPads thrown at them before they ever see anything that has yeah. you know, that comes out of it. Like they go from pencil to iPad and, and computers. Um, you know, so it, it's it's a it's it's a case of like it's just not being a focal point in our education system. So where is that <coughs> connection going to be going forward? You know, where where is that introduction to? Uh, analog writing instruments, like a better analog writing instrument than, let's say, like a pencil or, you know, a ballpoint pen. There has to be that certain point. That's a good question. I'm still stumped. Where is it going? Like, what's the next um, G? I really do like, I've seen additive pens. Have you ever seen that? No. Uh, they, they do like a DNA double helix pen. So it's, it is oh, a 3D, those look cool. 3D, yeah, it's I... a 3D printed pen. And they do, and they, it's an eyedropper fill that it, it does it in like a, a helix. So that's it, pretty it, cool. Yeah, it's really trippy. But like that kind of stuff uh, does explore the idea of like other types of pen designs. You know I what I was thinking? I, I was thinking like that same concept, but instead of just a helix or something like that, like personalize it with your name. Yeah, that you know would what be I mean. Cool, like like a imagine version of that. Yeah, and you just fill it from the back, however way it is that you fill whatever, and then you, and then it just swirls in. It just says your name. That would be. Or, or whatever you want it to say, you know, right. it could, it could, it could say anything, you know, like this is my pen or yeah. a pen or your pen sucks, my pen rules. <laughs> I, I don't know, something, you know, like that would, that would be cool. Or I, you know, I remember when, um, and this, when I was a kid in high school, my friend had this pen and it was like a, a woman in a bikini. And if you turn it upside down to write right, it, right. the, the, the you know? Yeah, yeah, the, the clothes fall the off. The clothes yeah. fall off. Maybe something like that. I don't know. For you. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Dudes who buy pens are online a lot. You don't think they're making stops at some other websites? Some questionable websites. Right, right? Yeah. Like, like imagine if they had a pen for that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we could merge two industries. The adult film industries and... Um, no, I don't know if people want that. But I'm just... Yes, sir. Speaking of which... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have a great <laughs> idea um, for a design. <laughs> C. Kahua actually chimed in. He definitely would want uh, your idea for the blended variable flow pen. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that was something. I actually just... Getting. Oh, no, no, the, the, the one where you, where you regulate the thing. flow of the two different yeah ink chambers. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, that was kind of just like me just... 
because I, I got that idea from the the Monte Verde, uh, the Monte Grappa Q1. Mm. Um, there was a, there was like a it was kind of looked like a revolver where it like had four different ink chambers and like you could actually change it out and like s switch it out to, to to the different ink cartridge and then you would have that blended effect for like a limited amount of time but then it would switch over to whatever ink that was in there. But that was like a ten thousand dollar pen. Like there was no practicality behind it to even say that that's a feasible idea to like bring to market yeah. uh so ferdinand de Guinson asks or he says i was thinking of getting a lamy 2000 should i absolutely oh hells yeah yeah that's yeah. what um asha actually uh, uh was was contemplating for such a long time and was like should i guess i said, just get it because it's just it's it's a beast yeah that pen savage yeah. yeah i mean i mean the nitwits like you're gonna get an extra fine and it's gonna write like a western medium right, right? but that pen is solid it's that, just like the, the feel the the balance of it the the you know fact that you could fill it you know using the piston mechanism and then the gold you know the gold nib on it do you know what i love about that pen this is really really just solidifies me as a nerd and a dork is the piston knob is like invisible until you open it. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, it looks just, completely seamless. Right. Until you and, start opening and then it. You open it, it's like, holy God, there it is. And I'm sitting there like, Nick, Nick, Nick. You know what I mean? I'm like, Peter, Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> open it up, close it, open it up, close it, open it up, close it. Yeah, but that pen, I you, uh, like, I can't even believe that um, it was designed, you know, 50, 50 plus it years ago. It hasn't changed. That it just it just looks like a pen that was designed yesterday. Yes, it looks like a futuristic blimp. Yeah, but definitely. And you know what? I would probably because I I actually have held out on buying that pen because I know it will just be around forever and ever. I am waiting for when they come out with some sort of wackadoo kind of like color or something or something else that just deviates from the normal and not the black amber 50th anniversary that's ridiculously expensive and like i don't know the steel one i like the steel anniversary. the steel one's cool and it has like extra weight but like i just don't want to pay that much for it because of the fact that i know that the regular you know what i wish expensive i wish they made the lamy 2000 but i don't know called it the lamy 1000 but instead of a gold nib they made a steel nib and then reduced true. the price by like half oh but then that would that would be that would kill the sales of the regular 2000 then i would probably say no people no more than no more than having a steel nib edison kills the sales for a gold nib edison wouldn't you say i mean listen people That's will have true. the option you'll have the option of getting a lamy 1000 with a steel nib or a lamy 2000 with a gold nib but you pay for the gold you know what i mean like the right. lamy, lamy 2000 is like 160 mm -hmm. imagine you can get a lamy 1000 for 89.99 you're not gonna you're not gonna lobotomize or kill the sales of your lower end lamis, mm -hmm. but you're gonna get the same type of nib made of steel. You know that hooded nib, right? And I, I I think it's a great idea. If you think it's a great idea, let me know. Call your local congressman. By the time I come back, from tell me, how them do you about not have to pee. Jeez. <laughs> tell them about the custom eight twenty three and then the Lamy one thousand that Roy just invented. So, the question hey, yes. If they do it, I I want royalties on that. He wants royalties on that. So, yeah. in the meantime, uh, Melissa Hogan asks, are there any really unique fountain pens, features, colors, etc., out or coming out soon that I can keep an eye out for? Cool. She really likes her Bennu Luminous Blue. Oh, cool, cool. Melissa, first of all, I know I know Melissa. Hi, Melissa. I know I, I recognize your name. Um, any new colors and, and finishes and stuff like that? Uh, we do have... A, uh, an exclusive Sailor 1911 that actually uh, Chris had picked the the color out on it matches his uh, or it gets close to matching the color of his guitar that he likes so uh, we have that um, we actually just started to send out there's uh, some gold spot bookmarks that go out with orders and they actually have like a couple of teaser shots of that pen so um, that's expected to come out in December which we're pretty excited about um, there's also the Pelican uh, Vibrant Orange, um, which has a very bright uh, orange look. It's in the 600 uh, model, yes, a 600 model uh, with gold trim, and pretty excited about that one. It's a very beautiful uh, color. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, really, a lot of the releases have come out for the fourth quarter of pretty much like have, have come out or are either on its way. Um, actually, one other thing too, a uh, little bit of a teaser on a couple of Monte Grappa uh, Fortuna pens that are gonna be coming uh, to Goldspot in the next month or so. 
and that we're pretty excited about. I can't even really talk too much about it, but they are out of this world. If you could kind of catch the meaning of, of that, um, you know, little drop of a hint there. Yes. Uh, Michael Strau asks, what are your thoughts on the Lemmy dialogue? On the Lemmy dot which dialogue? The dialogue three, one, two? Doesn't specify. I know Michael I'll, I'll too. Know Michael to... actually could come, he could come <laughs> from his, uh, I think he's, he's in, he's in Aberdeen over here, so he could come in <laughs> if he wants to and, and, and chime in, although I think we're going to be ending the, uh, the, the broadcast pretty There was a movie here. called Aberdeen with, uh, with, uh, the, with Cersei. Oh yeah, with Thrones. Cersei Lannister, yeah. Yeah. It's a good movie. Oh, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Ferdinand says he's in with the Lemmy. You convinced him. Nice. <laughs> the 2000? See, mission accomplished. We got somebody to, to, to get into the to the 2000 on Fountain Pen Day. Wait, is he saying he's in on the Steel Dave concept of the 2000? The Lemmy 1000? Oh, someone else actually did say they liked the, uh, the Lemmy 1000 idea. But yeah, this guy's. I don't know who 2000. you are, but I like you. <laughs> just for agreeing with me. <laughs> oh, three. Oh, the, the dialogue, dialogue three. three. I, I, you know, dialogue three. The Lamy Lam Dialogue 3, thoughts, if you had. I don't own one. Uh, you know, I, I've one. never actually touched one, so I can't I, I it. have. Cool. I have fondled a few. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you said fondled. Um, I've molested a few. The the Dialogue 3, I, I'm, you know, if if I'm going to be frankly honest, I think that pi the pilot vanishing point is, is better, although I know Mike uh it has has a little like you know he, he's not that happy with vanishing points because they're a bit on the drier side uh but in terms of like looking for another alternative that's like also retractable uh the 2000 i feels like a little bit too uh it's too high of a price point you mean it's the like, dialogue what did i say you said 2000 oh uh, yeah dialogue dialogue three yeah just, we we're talking about 2000s for like the last 10 minutes so um the dialogue three is a little bit more on the higher end and also too is that some of them it, it kind of bothered me, and you, this would like drive you absolutely crazy. Is some of them? I don't know if there was just like a, a a certain batch of them that were like this. But what happens is if you take out what you have to to fill the pen, you have to take out the, the the nib assembly just like you would with a vanishing point. So you have to unscrew the pen, take out the nib assembly, and then when you put it back, and you close it shut, when you when you twist it to protract the point, the nib face would not align with the clip oh they were driving nuts so when the when when the nib came out the clip would be here oh, no, no, no. or the and then i tried so i'm like okay maybe i have to like want to go through this way because it didn't the two the, the dialogue three does not have like a little cutout where like the vanishing point does where you'd be able to put it in and know that it's you're always it in the, the same right, spot the, yeah the same spot every time the dialogue you just simply just screw it back in and then and then you put the pen together again and what would happen is every time I would screw it back in, the nib would come out in a different spot. It would never come out exactly aligned Oof. again. I don't. I really don't know if it was not exactly aligned Oof. again. I don't. I really don't know if it was just because I never got a clear answer from the Lamy distributor at the po at that particular point. But I didn't know if it was just like a, a particular run on those pens. Is it the newer distributor or the older distributor? This was the they older one, though. The Ready you know, Foreman. I gotta tell you that I, I was wondering why don't I ever why didn't I ever get a dialogue? The the, the rationale for me was. If I'm going to get a retractable pen, right? Why would I get one that costs three hundred over one that costs one hundred and fifty bucks? Yeah, you know that that was my that was that was a big thing, and, and I thought I was like, okay, well, it's a premium price point because it's like a larger pen. It's got like it's palladium uh, finished, and it's like it's like really super ultra modern. It's got the fourteen carat. Well, I mean the the, the vanishing points have eighteen carat nibs on them, but it's got a bigger nib. It's like the it's like the the uh, like the LZ fifty version, but just in in gold um and uh you know for me it's got a lot of things going for it but it's got too much stuff going for it it's yeah, kind of like, like it, 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 it kind of got in its own way right it's kind of like sega versus nintendo they got the 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 masters they had the sega the Genesis, dreamcast and, and then they had like the sega cd and then they had the, all kinds of consoles and they kind of just had too many things going for them it got in their own way that's the way i feel with the dialogue that's why i haven't gotten one Daniel K asked, "What's a pen that is so good that you have two of them, and why?" What's a pen that's so good that I have two of them? Which ones do you have two of? Because I, I, I'm trying to think of which ones I have two of. Mm. I have two of. I have two Edisons. Well, actually, no. This is um. This is this would be technically number three, but this is my daughter's pen. This is the the, the Edison Beaumont, and I have an Edison Herald of which 
was done prior to the, back in the days when he was doing when Brian was doing the pens one at a time and he was actually had like a live stream set up in his workshop and he, you could see him working on his pens so he'd be like oh your pen is on the lathe if you want to tune in live and I thought that was like the most phenomenal thing ever. I was like oh man this is great um, but I also have uh, a Menlo of, of his as well and uh, and I I, I, I do enjoy this and pens a lot because yeah, of that. So do I. But you can hit over the head for those Menlo's. Those, uh, they're expensive. They're expensive. They're worth it, but they're expensive. Yeah. For me, I have to say it's the, uh, like the Compline Duragrafts. Mm -hmm. And they're not, exp and the reason why is because they're not expensive. You get a dud when it comes to the nibs, which, you know, they, they make so many, you probably will get a dud here and there. But you can always swap them out. You know what I mean? You can always tinker with it, and if you don't like it, it's not expensive to swap out a, a nib. You can buy an Edison nib, you can get a Goulet nib, you know, you can get a replacement Conklin nib, even, you know, you can get all kinds of Bach nibs, you can get, they all fit, you know what I mean? And, the, you know, the Duragraph, <coughs> especially something like the Orange Knights, they have the Red Knights, what is that one called? That's, I think it's just called Red Knights. Red Knights, yeah. they got the uh, Purple Knights, they got, they don't have a Green Knights. Yeah, like, you listening? Um... You know, the, the, I like the Duragraphs. They're kind of like old school looking, though. They are. You know, but... That's what it's supposed to be, like, Conklin, you know, taking Yeah, but I love the stuff. fact that they have threaded converters. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't have to worry about dropping the... Loosening over time, none mm -hmm. of that stuff, you know, so... One pen I also do have two of that is vintage. I have two uh, Vacumatics still. I actually had four at one point, but then I got rid of the other two because I just... I just was not using them at all, hmm. but I love the Parker backs for that, for that, uh, you know, the stacked, you know, celluloid, and it's just the so beautiful colors that, they, that I just, they are just like eye candy to me. So even if I don't use those other two, like, they'll still sit in my collection because I just like looking at them. I have to get another Ascenza. I'm going to get, I want to get all the colors eventually. On this. I love the Ascenza. You hope that they come out with new colors then, right? Oh, I, I've been, I've been... Passive, passive aggressively asking for green ones mm -hmm. on Instagram to, to the uh, pretty ink lady, um, making snide comments about how this would have been my favorite pen that I, the one pen I did. They did an interview with me, a Q&A with me on their blog, Yaffa. Cool. And they said, what's the one, you know, Yaffa brand pen? I was like, I would have chose the Ascenza, but it's not green. Right. So I'm going to have to go with, you know, and I went with a, a different uh, pen, uh, the, the Monteverde Prima. Right, the green. I love. I like that pen too. I mean, that's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'm going to get more of the uh, essences. I want to get the other colors. Yeah, the, the pen is just. It, it's. A, I can't believe how inexpensive that is and what you get with that pen. It's my. It's my absolute favorite pen. You know, like. It's my. It's for under a hundred bucks. You're getting a faceted acrylic pen. Like it's. It's baffling. I'm like when I got it, I honestly. Remember when I ordered it mm -hmm. from you? I was like, you know, just send it over. There. I'm like, this seventy four dollars. I'm expecting crap. I, no, it wasn't crap. It was ins like I was shocked, and I'm and I, I dwelled over it. I looked at it. I examined it. I'm talking, like, I'm like Rain Man counting cards on that thing. <laughs> I couldn't find anything wrong with it either. It wrote well. The stamping on the nib was good. <coughs> the nib wrote well. Didn't have any ink issues. It was not misaligned. The construction of the pen was insane. I couldn't get the, the facets to misalign, you know what I mean? It was just fantastic. I'm like, this is $76? I'm like, that's insane. Yeah. That's a, then, then taking it, like, and looking at the, the Dialogue 3 and saying, like, I can't get the nib to, like, align, and that's, like, a $300 pen. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, you know? And it's, like, sometimes, like, even with, like, the more expensive uh, Viscontis, the Opera Masters, right. sometimes they don't align. And those are $800 pens. You know, are you telling me that an $800 pen is going to not align when you close it, but a, 60, a $70 pen will? You know, I mean, it's just, uh, not to knock Visconti, I love Visconti also. They're very expensive pens, and I'm not saying they're not worth it, but a $76 pen it, it is nailing it on the head. Yeah. With the, uh, it's just, and also, like, also another thing is that the sides are even. That's another thing, like, for a hand-polished pen, it's almost like, it's not machine made, but it's very close because the edges lot, and the corners are the of, like, same. Right, and the finishes same. to it. Yeah, and then the, each corner is the same width. It's it's a fantastic pen. 
I, it's I honestly don't thing. know how you were able to drink two monsters in like the span of like two hours. This is uh, this is normal for me. I'm this is gonna normal die for you. Attack in like twenty minutes. Oh man, because I because I, I I if I need to do like pull an all nighter or or stay up like while driving, I will drink one of those and I will feel like like wired. For man, a long time. I explain my person because I I generally don't sleep more than four hours. Every like day, every every yeah. day, <clears throat> every once in a while, every once every couple months, I'll crash and like hibernate. But typically, I, I can't sleep. But like after after like the fourth hour, I just snap awake and I'll be like, I'm so tired, I want to go back to sleep, but I can't go back to sleep. I don't know why. <laughs> so sometimes I sometimes I, that's I, when you do tend to do a lot of your movie editing too, right? It's yeah, like that, that's when you get up. That's, that's like when you're when you lack sleep and then you're sitting there and it's like four a.m. and you have to wake up in an hour and a half and you just can't fall asleep. That's when crazy ideas start infecting your brain and then you're like, how can I make this fountain pen with you? even better oh I know what I'll do I'll do a proctological exam on grizzly bear you know and just be like, oh, videotape it. let's see what happens you know what I mean you just start getting crazy ideas I wonder what happens if I whistle backwards underwater and then you try stuff and then sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but did you want to talk about the crazy idea that you're going to be coming up with and and like collaborating with like for for the new year for your channel or no is that that thing that I was talking about the other day about the thing the thing, the thing that involved the multiple things, like coming together in the one thing. Gotcha. Yeah. No. Yes. Did you want to, like just? Uh, okay. what, are you, what are you talking about? Like the, really like the, like oh, the. Oh, oh, oh! I know. Recap the, the, the. Yeah, the I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, everybody, I, I'm already posting the 2018, 2000, the 2018 Savage Pen Awards, and I got guest speakers. Um, I'm not going to tell anyone who they are until the video launches. Um, but I got several guest speakers, um, of which I've got footage from them as requested already, and uh, everybody's pl is fantastic people. Um, I'm still waiting on a couple of guys. I'm not going to mention names, but um, one of them's name rhymes with Tom. Tom Olive. Tom yeah. Podo. Okay. You know. Um, <laughs> Um, but I got a lot of guest speakers, and uh, you know, I'm putting together a, an award show. Basically, what the award show is, I'm gonna have different categories. I'm gonna have the ultimate category is 2018 Most Savage Pen Award, Most and then savage. there's there's the 2018 Coolest Pen, and it has a slightly lesser criteria than the. But it's basically a top five, top ten type video, but I'm just, de I'm just decorating it up so it's more entertaining. Yeah, and it's, and it's your flavor. Right, and I'm adding other people to like bring like the fountain pen community together. Like, like some of the some of the people have less subscribers. Some of them have more subscribers. Actually, everybody has more subscribers than me. <laughs> some of them have way more subscribers than me. But the the idea is like, you know, sometimes I think within the within the pen community, like the industry, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a business guy or marketing guy, but the industry of the fountain pen is still small. Relative it is to relative, yeah, company. relatively to, let's say, if you're talking about, like, you know what electronics I mean? and stuff. And then, like, when it comes to, like, other retailers that I personally know, some some I don't know, so I'm not even going to talk to them, because they're going to be like, who the hell are you, weirdo, you calling me for videos for you, psycho, you know? Um, but some other retailers that, that are, in fact, your competitors, in my personal opinion, the existence of you and the other retailer is good for each other. You know what I mean? And um, I think it's good to bring together people because their customers can dip into purchasing from you and your customers can dip into purchasing from them things that you guys both don't have. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So I think it just spreads it even further and, and gives people a bigger community of availability to products and also just in terms of like the channel, you know, growing everybody's channel. Like if they show up on my channel and I show up on their channel and just like what we're doing today, right? people are going to learn who I am through you. People are going to learn who you are from me. Right. I've gotten a lot of emails like, oh, I never bought from Goldspot. Can I get that Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel discount code? I'm like, yeah, sure. I give them the code. And then they, they call up Dawn and mm -hmm. then they talk to Dawn. <coughs> and now there's a person behind the name. Right. And now they learn something about, oh, well, there's this nice lady that works there who, you know, will chat with you for seemingly hours. And, uh, you know, will stay on the phone with you just because you're bored and you like talking about your, I don't know, cheese collection. I don't know. But uh, 
<laughs> but I love it when she's like, oh, okay, well, it was nice talking to you. I got so many things to do. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I want to I keep talking about my, <laughs> my channel with you. <laughs> I'm being dismissed right now. I must stop this. <laughs> you know, but, but she's such a sweetheart. But I think a lot of people may not know that there's a face behind the name Goldspot. They don't know about Sal, mm -hmm. you know. They don't know about Karen. They don't know about you. They don't know that, you know, they think that every time you go on a video, like you, you were talking about doing that video with the Retro 51s, right? I'm not right, going right. to mention it right now, but you were talking about doing that. Mm -hmm. How does that benefit you in any way other than the fact that you're doing it? It doesn't. It benefits people watching it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So people don't know that you're just a, a guy who wants to share a passion. Yeah. They think, oh, he just works for Goldspot, so he must be out for the buck. Yeah, I'm just, you know? I'm just there collecting the paycheck. Right. You know? But if you if that were true, you wouldn't be collaborating with me in this project, the, the, the review yeah, the, channel. The, Why? Because yeah. there's another retailer. There's several other retailers. There's other people there. Right? But it's like you, them, and everybody else that's involved is like, you know, they don't know who else is involved, but they're like, I think it's cool if you're bringing other people in. They're all in their... You know they're on the same page, right? Like this is like this is fun because I mean we've had people ask questions and you know oh, yeah. and interact and even if people are just going to be watching this, let's say hours after, mm -hmm. it's still something that even if they were like snowed in like some remote part of the world, if they had an internet connection, they could still be a part of Fountain Pen Day because right, like exactly. they literally just sat in on a discussion between like two guys who love fountain pens and then like people who are chatting and asking questions and like totally geeked out about pens for like a solid two hours so it's like it's you know it's it's something that like doesn't necessarily have like an end to it because i mean of, of course like yeah we showed stuff that we could right. that we could buy at gold spot we mentioned stuff like that but like but like it's not like we're doing the whole qbc and you know sort of thing where we're like oh look at this you right, know? right. Like, and we're just we're just talking about if you call really the next 15 us. minutes you will get yourself a free absolutely nothing you know it's, yeah. it's not you know this wasn't a sales pitch but you know just kind of cool yeah I see him. You know what they do is like they like I would, my wife had it on the TV yesterday. And that's why I'm just mentioning it like at least like four times today. But um, but like even for something that's like twenty bucks, they have like you could do like four easy payments of like five dollars and change. I'm really? Like, who can't? Like I mean, yeah, I feel bad for somebody. But like like okay, if you can't afford twenty dollars for something that's on the TV, just you know, I mean, like I don't know. You know, I just, I just like, I was just like, maybe there's some other priorities that need to be readjusted. Let me tell you, know? you something funny though. This reminds me of a story. One time I called Dawn and she, she's like, she literally, I'm like, hey, I want to order this, and she's like, you spent too much. You're not buying anything. I'm like, no, 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 but I really want. She's like, no, 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 you're done. You're cut off. It's like that's she, it. Yeah, she actually cut me off. I'm like, I hit the phone. I'm like, she didn't let me buy something. I'm like, well, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> you know? I mean. It's yeah, we work. We work as like, it's like, it's like the, uh, it's like the, the gambling phone number. It's like, well, it's like we, we give you a healthy dose of reality at the same time. <laughs> right. So it's like, oh, you ordered, ordered from us like fifteen times in the last like, you know, a few weeks. I, I think you should probably slow down just a little bit. <laughs> you, you might need professional help. Yeah. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd have so many more pens. Oh, so many more. Can, can I talk about this Edison pen? Absolutely. I just, you know, I don't own the new one yet, but I'm just looking at it, and a preliminary examination reveals some results of differentiation. Above is the old version. This is the Beaumont Flake, right? The Bedrock Flake. But it's a Beaumont. Beaumont. It's a bedrock, bedrock Flake, flake. is the style. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm noticing. Just in the body alone, you have one, two, three parts. The grip section, the body, and then the end which is a separate piece. Sometimes you can't tell because it's really smooth, but you can tell because there's threads and you can see it through the translucency. So if it's I also a different color too. Right, it's, it's also a different color. If I heated this up and uh, heat it up enough, it would loosen up the epoxy and I could unscrew it. But then when I screw it back on, because the polish is done after it's connected, it won't be completely seamless. With the new one, and this one's called the uh, Twilight, Twilight Embers. Embers. Um, as well as the, this, whatever this one's called. It's in there. Uh, amber glass. Amber glass. And the unicorn. They should have had a mosquito trapped inside if they wanted to call it oh, that. Oh like man, it, like on the top, on the top video there, yeah. put like a little mosquito on there, call it Jurassic Park. Yeah. Oh, you can't oh, do that. No, you can't uh, do that. Uh, um, legal stuff. Yeah, how about the mosquito cemetery? Kind of. Stephen King-ish, but right, that's true. Yeah, and then you have the unicorn, which they seem to have taken off the barf part. 
but the story was like someone called it unicorn barf yeah. on social media yeah. and it stuck. But it, like this doesn't look like a unicorn to me. Not that I know what a unicorn looks like. Like I, I, I was suggesting possibly cotton candy would kind of cotton candy would have been better. I think cotton candy would have been better. But I like I like unicorn for the fact that unicorns are so hot right now. Mm -hmm. Look, look, look. See, this is what I was talking about. Well, that's because I think uh, mine has the engraving on yeah. it. Yeah, I think so it's anyway, just on a different way. Going back to the body, the body is a single piece. I'm noticing now. So, you got your grip section. This is your daughter's, right? Yes. All right, I'm not going to take it apart too much. But <clears throat> in the body, it's not an epoxy piece or screwed in piece. It is just one single piece. That makes this now safely eye droppable without modification. Uh, Brian edit uh, Brian Edison, Brian Gray with the older ones said that if you want to eye drop it to let to send it in so he can modify it so that it's eye droppable. I don't know what he would have done, but he would have made it so that it doesn't leak or whatnot. But this one you don't have to worry because it is just a single piece, and I think that is a huge sure improvement. Them. Yeah, because I that's I was wondering like why did they bother doing that? But it's because they made it a different color. But I'm so glad that. They went back and changed that and made made and just that. made them all one solid color. Yeah, making it one solid color yeah. is just the way to go, and I'm glad that they did that. Did you get rid of the bug? I did. Okay, nice. good. <laughs> Don't kill it because apparently they stink when you kill it. It's like yeah, a no, bug version of a skunk, <laughs> right? But anyway, that that difference is pretty uh, pretty important to note. Uh, note that makes the pen for me more appealing, not because I like to eye drop for things, right? But because it, it doesn't need construction to be wise, yeah, it doesn't need to. If it's all the same material, then why bother having to right. like, screw part different parts of it? Like as as long as less parts, the better. Right. You know, we we even went over that with uh, uh, with uh, with Michael, the the CEO of Coeco. It was like the Lilliput's only made out of three parts, and it's just like the simplicity. There's a value in that simplicity. It's just that it's just it's just it's just dead, like just easy to put together and, mm -hmm. and there's less there's less points of failure that could be possible with the pen yeah that's strange do you have another unicorn barf at uh yeah in the other room why well i just want to compare it with the one you that with your daughters because if you look at this this unicorn barf cap has a, a bigger diameter than all the other ones is this the color maybe nope it's not an optical illusion either oh. i'm actually it, it actually is look at that compare them all this unicorn barf is uh is bigger i wonder why I wonder if uh, yours was custom made, right? Well, it was. It was. It was made before the the actual production of the of like the production model. So, because these are here, right here. I bet you they're exactly the same, down to the like micrometer. This one oh. here is thicker. And that makes me wonder about the back ends too. Look, if the back ends are different. Yep, it's also taller. Look at that. Interesting. It's also thicker. It's overall thicker. So you're saying I have like a special one off there? Yeah, yeah. especially with nice. the, with the Edison Pen Company being upside down. Yeah, well, uh, mine, uh, my daughter is is a big fan of unicorns. So when this was called unicorn, I was like, right, I have to get this one. Did you and tell her that it's they just cut off the barf part? Um, I did mention that it was like there was a pen style called unicorn barf. Um, but uh, but she gets a kick out of the fact that it's called unicorn in the first place, and I had. Uh, Brian had engraved uh, the word believe um, onto this because I mean of course like like when you look at anything that's like like for young girls that has like a unicorn on it usually it has like those other sorts of sentiments on there so as I figured believe was a nice thing to put on here because not only um, does it kind of like connect with that whole unicorns uh, theme but like uh, believing is one of those things that I feel you know, it's, it's it's an enabling sense of saying like I believe in you know doing what I set after to do, and that's just kind of like the theme of like what I wanted to give her was that you know like is this this is I, I told her is this not you know some cheapy pen that like because I she has a Lamy Safari she has like some other uh, you know inexpensive pens I was like this is something that you know I'm entrusting you that you are going to you know keep take care of this pen and make sure because it's not it's not cheap like i you know if you break this i'm gonna have to send this back to get repaired you have to pay to get it repaired so um you know like i i just want her to feel that confidence and, and believe in herself and uh believe in the things that she does and 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 she likes writing she likes writing and doing uh drawing and stuff like that and just to kind of believe in herself and in her pursuits uh you know so that's my whole spiel as to why it that on there but you know um, what 
po uh, the threads are not as, as well polished on the newer ones than they are on the older ones. Oh yeah? Yeah, they feel more chalky. A little bit more chalky? Yeah. I mean, that'll smooth out over time naturally, but it used to be that Edison would uh, make sure they're super polished by the time you get it. And you can tell by the way it feels and, and how it sounds even. See what I'm talking about? Man, you're like way too anal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know. I wonder if that's a deliberate choice. That they think, oh, it's not important because over time, as you cap it and cap it, it's going to self polish. Right. But, but it used to be that that was something. I wonder what about the body now that I'm. I wonder, because I want because the way it would be with an Edison, if you spun it, it'll it's so smooth, it'll just spin using inertia. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think I did, yeah, I, I do remember that, like, doing with my, uh, my Herald. Mm -hmm. I would do that, and I would just spin the, because I think that had, did that have a little section on it? No, the Herald? No, they know. Now, see, see what I'm talking about, watch this. I'm putting it on, it just spins all the yeah. way until it's closed, right? Because that's really, really anal retentive polishing, right? So, that's what it kind of does. But you got to also realize that your daughter had that pen for a couple of months, right? Yeah, but she hasn't really, I mean, she's she hasn't gone through, like, Okay, experiment time. Watch this. Old Beaumont, okay? Not old, it's new. It's just old series. Watch this. So, this is how well polished they are. I'm just going to spin it like a top, right? Watch it again. I didn't get a good spin. All the way till it's closed. That's how smooth they are, okay? New Beaumont. Okay, the threads are not as well polished because they feel they feel a little chalkier. Or maybe, they're, maybe the tolerances are a little... Higher, so there's less space, but watch this. Yeah, because you have to then turn it. <laughs> I mean, they, they're still, like, I can feel that they're really, the tolerances are really tight, but if that's the case, then... This is what happens when you're on two Monster Energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens, man. Start, start like, getting all crazy about, like... Oh, this is just normal, normal for me. I mean, listen, there are small, small differences in, in the space between the threads when they meet up. Right, right. This one has less space, you know, so maybe that's why I'm feeling more of the, uh, like I said, the chalky. But that, like I said, that goes away over time. Right. Especially with how uh, how tightly that you will close the caps and, and the so barrels. Look how, and look how smooth and like it's just spinning it. It goes all the way till it, it shuts, right? All right, dude, I think we're going to be tuning people out. Yeah, right. We're There's playing a, around with the barrel. That guy's a weirdo. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> this is this has been going on for way too long now. <laughs> that guy's um, a psycho. <laughs> what, uh, what were some of the other, uh, anything else, closing thoughts as far as, like, uh, Fountain Pen Day? Gee, I don't know. No, I think I think we've exhausted everything. I think we've exhausted the all of the paths that we could possibly follow. Yeah. But check out my channel, Pen Boy Roy. Pen Boy Roy, one word, on YouTube. Yes. And check out my tribute to Fountain Pen Day. It is amazing. Like, I woke I woke up to him sending me a text message with that, and it, it's been a pleasant start to the day. I didn't send it to him when he woke up. I sent it way into the he middle knew. of the night. He knew the time that I was. <laughs> I figured it would be on sleep, so I sent yeah. it, like, one in the morning. You know? I, I, I purposely have my phone on, like, do not disturb from the hours of, like, 11 to 7. Was that I because call it, I call it the Roy rules. <laughs> oh... But, it's true. Yeah. So it's been it's been fun hanging out with everybody, you know, and I, it's uh, great that you guys asked some questions and, uh, you know, you're chatting it up and, and asking us, uh, you know, it just was fun having overall having you guys hanging out. And even if you're watching this and it's like next Tuesday, uh, you know, appreciate you turning in and, and you know, leave us a comment, even if you're uh, not watching this live and, and let us know if you have any questions about anything that you saw. Or, uh, or have any comments about the things that uh, we talked about here today. Um, keep the Fountain Pen Day spirit uh, going by heading to goldspot.com and checking out our Fountain Pen Day uh, blog post where you could enter to uh, be part of our Fountain Pen Day mega giveaway, uh, which is consists of over $500 in uh, pen-related awesome goodies and surprises, uh, which there are five winners that are picked, and the deadline is... Uh, Sunday, November the 4th at 11.59 p.m. So um, if you go to that blog post on our website, it will be all the way at the down at, at the bottom of that page. You'll see the, uh, the entry form to, uh, to fill it out. Um, and then while you're at it, 
Uh, shop at goldspot.com this weekend to take advantage of our Fountain Pen Day uh, gift specials, which are included when you reach certain thresholds. Um, uh, it, 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 as little as thirty dollars, you can get a package of uh, three uh, free ink samples, which are randomly chosen, which are which are kind of nice for fountain pen enthusiasts. You can try new ink, and, you know, find a new color that you enjoy. Um, or there's up to two hundred fifty dollars if you're looking for something that's that's relatively expensive. Um, there's also uh, goodies along the way that you would get uh, as high as your purchase goes. So uh, the more that you buy, the more that you get free. Uh, again, valid until uh, Monday, so all throughout the weekend, check that out. And that's my that's my official sales spiel at the very tail end of this two and a half hour uh, broadcast. So I refrained from doing anything else but besides that, and I just left it towards the tail end, you know. So uh, Roy will be going home with some fountain pen goodies as well, and uh, you know, and uh, he lets you know where he could where you can find him on the interwebs uh, as far as his YouTube channel, but he's also on Instagram and on Facebook. Do you have a Facebook page or is it just like your no, 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 it's personal? a Facebook page. No. Okay, so you have a Facebook I have a, page. I have that's Roy on there. Space Penboy, which is my personal one. Okay, and then I have the Penboy Boy Facebook channel. Facebook channel. Yeah. So then, so then you would have uh, you have multiple places to contact him and to uh, message him about certain things. So uh, thank you again for joining us and watching. Uh, the video, like, subscribe, and I, I put the like, subscribe shit, at the, I, I like doing that, like, at the end of my videos, so, um, I'm gonna do that right now, so, like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notifications when we post new pen videos, like, un live unboxings, interviews, and, uh, helpful pen, <coughs> uh, you know, how-tos and whatnot, which we, allu we alluded to a little bit, is gonna be a Retro 51, uh, little how-to, it's a hack, actually, and I think you really I, like I didn't it. even, did I allude to that? You did kind of a little bit. You you mentioned it, but then you held back because it's going to be a surprise. Right. And he actually inspired me to do it. So it's going to be I all, am inspirational. All thanks to Roy. Uh, there's going to be a nice, awesome Retro 51 pen hack coming up next week. You can so. turn it into a missile. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can turn it into a ballistic missile. <laughs> um, you know, happy Fountain Pen Day to everybody. Uh, thank you again to Carrie Yeager, the uh, grandfather of Fountain Pen Day. Uh, and, uh, you know, thank you for everybody for joining in and stay inky, my friends. Take care. And this dude, too. Stay, be well, be safe, right? I like it. Yeah, so Did I, it for me. Yeah. <laughs> be well, be safe. Love you guys. Take it easy.